until you show back up. But if you don't show back up, we'll continue with the meeting. The number, if you want to write it down, if it's not in front of you to call if you get into trouble, is 519-717-2192. Uh, when we go in camera, obviously we will we will break then. I don't think, are there any questions in the format of the meeting? Seeing none, we'll go to item one, please, the attendance. I'll take attendance now. Councillor Wheat. Present. Councillor McAlpine. Present. Councillor LaFerrier. Present. Councillor Howes. Present. Councillor Bell. Present. Councillor Pierce. Present. Councillor Chambers. Councillor Chambers. Sorry, I'm here. Okay, Councillor Miller. Present. Councillor Coleman. Here. And Councillor Gottward. Present. So we're all here. Second thing on the agenda, please, is the approval of the agenda. Is there anything to be added to the, I'm hearing an echo. Councillor Gatward. I have one other, one item, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to raise under other business. Okay. Regarding the us? GRCA. GRCA? Yes. Okay, are there any other additions to the agenda? Seeing none, uh, Councillor Miller, please. Yes, uh, moved by myself, second by Councillor Coleman, that the county brain agenda and addendum for Tuesday, November 24, 2020, be approved. Thank you. Any other questions or concerns? Seeing none, vote on the agenda, please. Any opposed to the agenda the way it stands? Thank you. Carried. Um, declaration of pecuniary interest. Does anyone have anything? No. Seeing none, we'll move on to the delegations, please. Look, I'm here. I'm hearing a very bad echo, uh, Heather. I don't know. Um, maybe maybe we can make sure our mics are off if we're not speaking. I don't know. Okay. So the first delegation. <clears throat> um, it is my pleasure, on behalf of the County of Brant, to welcome Dr. Patricia McCannery. President and CEO of the World Council of City Data and James Pateva, Vice President of the World Council of City Data. The County of Brand has been working diligently toward achieving the impressive World Council on City Data, IS, ISO 37120 Platinum Certificate or Classification. And we look forward to joining the World Council of City Data Global Network as made possible by the Government of Ontario and the Canadian Cities Project. So welcome, Dr. McCarney. Where are you, Patricia? There you are, welcome. You're on, there you go. Thank you very much, uh, Mayor Bailey. I, I hope that the echo isn't from me. I've been having trouble with my microphone, so hopefully no. it's not coming from mine. <laughs> no, you uh, so good evening. Thank you. Thank you for the nice introduction, Mayor Bailey, council members. Thank you for the kind introduction. It's truly a pleasure to be here this evening with all of you and to present the WCCD ISO 37120 certification to you. So uh, as introduced, I'm Patricia and um, I'm president and CEO of the World Council on City Data here in Toronto. And uh, may I also introduce my colleague, James Patava, to you for this evening's presentation. I do, of course, wish we could be there in person with you this evening, but I trust there's better times soon ahead uh, that we can soon visit the County of Grant in person and actually present a framed certification to you, Mayor Bailey, in person with a nice photograph. Well, thank I hope. you. I think we're coming to this soon. So um, I think we can move to the presentation, which I believe um, Heather was going to load up for us. I don't know if you're seeing it yet. Just one second. So that's where we'll begin. So again, congratulations, Mayor Bailey, and to the County of Grant on this platinum certification. 
This is a true demonstration of your city's dedication to building high caliber data that will inform planning and management across the city and drive what we believe a sustainable prosperity well into the future. This global standard is really a global first. What this means is that municipalities across the globe are being equipped with apples to apples data for the first time and cities of all sizes are beginning to compare their progress and learn from each other and be part of a global community of data-driven cities committed to both local and global progress for more sustainable, smart and resilient cities. With this certification this evening, the County of Brant is joining a global network, a global network of data conscious cities from Los Angeles to Buenos Aires, uh, to London, Dubai, as well as many small and medium smart medium-sized urban communities, for example, across the Netherlands, there's cities of similar size to the County of Grant, across other parts of Europe, uh, including also Iceland, and of course, Africa and Asia. But plus there's another 30 Canadian municipalities across Canada that have also been joining this network over the last few years, um, including Quebec City, Saskatoon, Edmonton, St. John's, Newfoundland, uh, Mount Pearl, Corner Brook, Selkirk, and then a little closer to home here in Ontario, uh, we have uh, Greater Sudbury, for example, the city of Cambridge, Kitchener, Waterloo, Toronto, uh, Richmond Hill, Markham, Mississauga, and others, just to name a few in the area. And uh, Oshawa was just certified this week as well. So the County of Brant, um, if we could move to the next slide, please, um, is one of 15 Canadian cities in this Data for Canadian Cities project. Uh, this is a cross Canada um, effort to expand the network across uh, really important cities and municipalities and communities that are well equipped with data. And so County of Brant was actually chosen as one of those very, um, important of the 15 cities chosen to participate in this project, which is supported by the Ministry of Infrastructure and Communities. And Minister Catherine McKenna has sent greetings to you all with this uh, slide as she's, um, and a hearty congratulations were sent from her to you this evening. And she regrets that she's unable to join us this evening due to a parallel um, Parliament meeting that she had to attend. So uh, it's with regret, but she does send her congratulations. So uh, if we could go to the next slide, please. I would like to, at this point, turn it over to James. Um, and then maybe James, if you could just do a short briefing on what this achievement is about um, and we'll continue on to the ceremony. We'll be brief. <laughs> Very good. Thank you, Patricia. And thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council. Such a pleasure to be here this evening. As Patricia was saying, County of Brand is now part of what truly is a global first. The World Council on City Data is now certifying cities around the world in accordance with what is the first international standard for city data. What that means is that cities around the world are now collecting data in a way that is truly apples to apples to allow for both learnings to travel across cities but also to really uh, ignite some interesting insights within your own city in layering these indicators over top of important initiatives like your strategic plan and many others as well. Uh, so again, congratulations. Uh, next slide, please. The standard itself uh, is composed of 104 fully numeric indicators across 19 themes that you're seeing on your screen right now. And all of these 19 themes were in fact driven and chosen by a tremendous network of cities around the world, which we then fed into the work, work of the International Organization for Standardization. So it really is a city-driven initiative, which is really important in all of this as well. Next slide, please. Now, as you'll have heard from Patricia, uh, the County of Brand is receiving platinum level certification. Uh, other than sounding you know, very impressive, which it certainly is, I just wanted to break down what that means for you. It means that through the incredibly diligent work of, of the staff throughout the city, that Brant was able to report over 90 of the 104 indicators in conformity with the standard. So it really is a true demonstration of uh, the high caliber of data that you collect and in turn that data that you can use for data-driven decision-making as well. Next slide, please. 
Just before we move on to a very quick overview of the project, uh, the Canadian brand is now the ISO 37120, which is the first box in the middle there, the first standard for, for uh, first global standard for cities. We also have two new standards in development, one on smart cities and one on resilient cities. But now you've achieved this first you know, really impressive certification, you're able to move on to those as well. So just something to think about in the future as you continue the sort of data journey. Next slide, please. And maybe we'll just move to the next one as well. Uh, so as Patricia mentioned, this is a really critical project that's being funded by the Ministry of Infrastructure and Communities in Ottawa right now with the full support of Minister McKenna. Year one of this project, which you've just completed, was very much about setting baselines and collecting that first year of data, which is then collected annually. As we move into year two, we're starting to look at how to put this data to use. Patricia will actually show a bit of highlighted work on that in just a moment. But in year two and year three and beyond is when we start to get to the really interesting aspects of this project. What is the data showing? How is it tracking against some of your important priorities and strategic initiatives? And moreover, what trends are starting to develop, which is a really important piece as well. Uh, next slide, please. And then before I turn it back over to Patricia to show you some of the highlights of this data uh, and some of the really celebratory points for, for Brandt, um, just to, to give you a quick insight, you know, this project is really about creating data-driven municipalities. It's helping to inform and direct federal spending across the country as governments, federal, as the federal government is looking at this data, but in turn, as you can use this data to also, you know, look at the federal government as well for funding. Uh, it's showcasing the impact of spending. There's a great job creation and active aspect of this as well. I know that your economic development folks have been behind this all the way. It's allowing cities to track progress on the climate agenda, and it's also helping small communities of all sizes embrace more global initiatives and goals like the UN Sustainable Development Goals at a local level. So with that, uh, thank you once again. I'm gonna turn it back to Patricia, who's gonna show some incredible highlights of your data this evening, and uh, truly a pleasure to speak with you, and I look forward to seeing you all in person soon. Over to you, Patricia. Thank you, James. If we could go to the next slide. Um, I'm just going to really show you very quickly, and the deck is well with you and ready for circulation, so I won't spend much time on these next few slides, but I wanted to share it with you tonight because these are really celebratory data points. Um, normally, when we're looking for, you know, three or four data points to showcase a city's achievements, especially not just in Canada, but on the global stage, we have to, you know, really survey a lot of the data and find them. But with the County of Brant, so many popped out <laughs> very quickly. So I just, it's really exciting for me to share this with you because it was such a pleasure looking through the data because we didn't know what to expect uh, from the County of Brant. So with that, um, if we could go to the next slide. So this first one is affordable housing. Um, and I know in your strat plan, you, you do uh, talk about uh, this idea of sustainable and managed growth that's very inclusive development in your community. This number stands out um, across Canada for sure, but also on the global stage. So I wanted to show it first in a context of Canada that 84% of your population is living in affordable housing. That's such a high number globally and in Canada. So I wanted to show you that one. And the next slide. Um, we'll just go really quickly through this. This is another one that really stood out on youth unemployment. 12% uh, is a really great number. And there you are um, relative to other cities uh, across Canada again. Um, you can see even just only Guelph is a little bit lower than you are. So that's a really uh, great achievement as well. And again, it's very much in line with the County of Grant strategic plan on economics and resilient communities. Um, the next slide, please. And this one really popped out. Uh, <laughs> the County of Brant has one of the cleanest air uh, uh, indicators, this indicator on particulate matter in the air. So the lower, the better of this concentration of particulate matter. And 7.2 is on the global stage is a really low number. And we know that municipalities are using this kind of data to promote attractiveness of their community. Um, not only just for quality of life, but health of citizens and um, the location of businesses who really do appreciate having this quality of life around air quality and bike lanes and other things that really enhance the community. And we know I, we have one of our cities is Shanghai. <laughs> and we know that 
Shanghai is actually attracting population from Beijing right now because Beijing has such a high uh, particulate matter concentration. So this really does matter to investment. Um, and it's, and I have to say County of Brant's one of the best numbers in the, on the global stage. And it's really something to celebrate. If we could go to the next slide, I think that actually shows up some of the comparators. Yes, so there's Oslo in the middle, um, The Hague, San Diego, Edmonton, Saskatoon going left, um, Amsterdam, London. So there's County of Brant with one of the lowest uh, particulate matter concentrations, which is a really, really fantastic number to, to be able to showcase. Uh, next slide. Uh, we also looked at the sustainable future, the sustainable trajectory that the County of Brant's on because it's so much featured in your strategic plan. So we started to look at some of the indicators here as well. If we could move to the next slide, I think there's just a few left and then we can uh, finish this section. Uh, yes, yeah, so climate stewardship, this is greenhouse gas, gas uh, emissions, uh, again, one of the lowest, and this is lower than many cities across Canada. And then the next slide, please. Um, this is um, um, this idea of sustainable infrastructure and great mobility that enhances quality of life, but also, you know, patterns of mobility. So in terms of the County of Brant, rel relative to peer cities that are under 50,000, so you can see Copenhagen, Iceland is over on the left, and um, some of the other cities, uh, Croatia, uh, in, in Canada, in Quebec, and others, Cornerbrook, you're, you have incredible... Um, kilometers of bike lanes, and this is all normalized per 100,000 population. So that's a great number. But when you look at it on the global stage, on the right-hand graph, I just wanted to highlight that, you know, many of the Dutch cities pride themselves on bicycle paths and the, the incredible mobility patterns around bicycles <laughs> and the paths that they've built. But County of Brandt uh, is actually better, I think, if you look across, Rotterdam is about the sixth one from the left, and Amsterdam is also over there on the left. So County of Brent's doing better than many of the Dutch cities, which is really a tribute to a commitment to a sustainable future in the County of Brent. And again, this is one of those indicators that economic development um, officers use in municipalities to help to promote their, their community. Uh, and I think I just have one more. <laughs> Go to the next slide, please. This is the uh, higher ed degrees in per 100,000 population. So this is the talent, the educated workforce that you have living in the County of Brant. And I, I highlight this one because the Data for Canadian Cities project, we didn't know this before we put all these red cities together, which is the Canadian cities across Canada, the, the other 30 cities. So when we look at our level of education, uh, can, Canadian municipalities in general, and in particular the County of Brant right here, does extremely well on the global stage. And this is another one of those, not only a sustainable future economically, but also uh, a really important economic development advantage that uh, is good to highlight and showcase for you tonight. So with that, the next slide, I'd like to now turn to the ceremonial part of the evening and finish off with this really hearty congratulations and to award you all with the County of Brant, uh, the County of Brant's WCCD Platinum Certification. And as James mentioned, this is the highest level of, of certification possible given all of the data that you put together for this work. And I, on that, I do wanna congratulate Mayor, Mayor Bailey and the dedicated staff led by Michael Bradley, your CAO, because the team that Michael has put together to work in the dedicated work of Alison Newton and Delia Reich uh, is just been phenomenal. They put this data together in record time and had it all certified by March 31st this past year. So we're just so pleased to already be in the throes of the second year of reporting and to have this uh, certification ceremony with you now. Um, it's a, a fantastic baseline, as James mentioned, we're building over the years, so we're going to see progress over these next three years too as we start to put this data together. So on the final slide, uh, the County of Brant has reported 94 out of the 104 indicators, a truly exceptional achievement. Uh, the County has showcased a commitment to a data-driven future for its citizens and innovative leadership in local governance. 
So on behalf of the WCCD, I'd like to congratulate the dedication of Mayor Bailey, the council and all the city staff to open standardized and comparable city data. This standardized data will help to increase the quality of life for all citizens while driving evidence-based decision-making and data-driven solutions. The County of Brant stands out in Canada and globally as a leader in working to create sustainable, resilient, inclusive, and a prosperous future for its residents. So congratulations, Mayor Bailey and all council. Congratulations to you all once again on this ISO Platinum certification. And I, I wish you all a good evening. Thank you very much. Well, thank, thank you very much. And I, and I have received the certificate. There I am there. <laughs> Uh, they, 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 they brought they brought it over to my house to and, and got a picture. Um, first That's of all, fantastic. you know what? So, sometimes we need to be reminded how lucky we are and how um, how fortunate we are to have staff. We always take uh, every opportunity to uh, say how grateful we are for our staff. They're very progressive, very uh, creative bunch of people. The county of brand is very very fortunate and sometimes we need to be reminded and on a world stage it's just even even better than just being canadian it, it, it is bigger than canada and we we appreciate it and we appreciate the work that allison and the staff put into this um, i'm very proud um, i think we all should be very proud and uh, we just need to be reminded how as i said how very lucky we are to be in the county of brand so in closing i'd like to thank the world council and city data for choosing the County of Brant uh, as one of the 15 Canadian communities to participate in this program and for your ongoing support. We would also like to thank the uh, Federal Ministry of Infrastructure and Communities for funding this program. Achieving this uh, certification allows the County of Brant to build new tools and systems to enhance decision-making, track processing and comparing past performances year by year. As well, the County of Brant has joined a global network where we can compare, collaborate, and learn by sharing performance solutions and progress by other WCCDISO certified cities worldwide. So thank you very much for coming out tonight and uh, and uh, making us all feel even better than we felt before we started the meeting. So thank you very much. Great. Thank you so much. Our pleasure. Have we a nice evening. Very much forward to working with you all over the next few years. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Absolutely. Putting the data okay. to use. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good night. Thank you. And again, thank, thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. And again, thank you, Allison, uh, for everything you've done to put this uh, on the ground. And and uh, how much prouder could we be than that? So the certificate's going to stay at my house until we finish the work at the council chamber and, and the offices there, and then we'll bring it back. It's actually very very nice and very impressive, and uh, I'm very proud of it. So. Thank you. Councilor, Thank you, Allison. Councilor, Allison, did you want to speak on 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 the work that was put into it? Do you want to? Um, I'll just say a few brief words. Um, I just want to thank all the staff because this really was a matter of collecting the data that already existed, um, and it was really a reflection of work that had already been done by all the staff. So um, we we were happy to take the lead on this, but like I said, it wasn't it it, it certainly wasn't our initiative. Um, it's really a reflection on the corporation and uh, with Michael's support, we were able to do it very quickly. So we appreciate that. Well, thank you. We appreciate, we appreciate it too. Uh, Councillor Gatward. Councillor Gatward, are you there? Yes, sorry, I had to unmute. Um, it is um, moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Wheat that the presentation from the World Council on City Data be received as information. And I'd like to congratulate all the staff as well. Yeah, it's a good night for the County of Brant. Any other questions, comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? Carried, we'll move on to the second delegation, please. Mary Lou Nectel and Art Means for the land transfer. Brent Mayor Bailey, oh, yep. sorry. we're still waiting for one of the attendees. Um, can we maybe move on to 4C and then come back to that one? Okay, uh, Jim uh, Sheffield, Nicholson Sheffield, architect said uh, regarding the Canesville Community Center concept design. 
Mr. Sheffield. Yes, good morning, everyone. Can everyone hear me okay? We can. Perfect, thanks. Uh, I, I guess uh, the screen is going to be shared to. Yeah, Heather will okay. share the screen. Okay. So if we can go to the slide presentation, thanks for having me tonight. Thank you for getting back to us so quickly. Not a problem. Heather sort of does everything, so she might be take a minute to sh share the screen. Okay. I have it here as well, if necessary. Yep. Oh, here we go. Oh, there we go. Thank okay. you. Great. Thank you very much. So uh, we'll just move to the next slide, please. So just to give everyone some context for the presentation uh, within the greater county of Brant to the location of the Canesville Community Center in the overall uh, county. Next slide. So, sorry, back up one. Yeah. Thanks. So this is a subject site and this, this slide is fairly important because what we want people to understand is the context of where we're putting this community center. It is a light industrial area and the buildings that surround the site are uh, typically industrial looking buildings or pre-engineered structures. And that is one of the cues that we took as part of the design for the project. Next slide. So this slide shows the subject site with the existing fire hall that's already been constructed and the proposed design. The Keynesville Community Center is um, holding the corner of the site. It, it, it becomes sort of a feature at the, at the corner of County Road 18 and Eward Avenue. We've, uh, as we move into the design, you'll see that we have the entrance to the building up uh, at the entrance driveway to make it obvious and inviting for uh, patrons that will be coming to visit the site. Um, one, of the, one of the other features that we're trying to incorporate into the design you'll see in the parking lot are um, bioswales. So we're trying to do a stormwater management by draining it into bioswales as opposed to simply dumping it into the municipal storm system. And we've provided for barrier free parking close to the entrance as well as an electrical vehicle charging station, which you would have seen in the opening slide. To the south of the property, we've indicated the notion of a future, potentially a future children's safety village uh, as part of the future phases. Next slide. In terms of the floor plan then, um, the building now is turned. So uh, County Road 18 would be to the top of this slide or to the west. One would uh, enter the site in the, under a covered entrance canopy is the entry vestibule. When you enter that vestibule, you can actually see through glazing on the opposite side out to County Road 18 so that passersby basically have a see-through view of the main lobby space for the building. There is an office at that front entrance that acts as a uh, visual surveillance of people coming and going. And it also has a door directly into the vestibule for after hours access. Off to the right side of the main entry is a multi-purpose room. That multi-purpose room obviously can be set up for a variety of functions. The tables can be arranged in different ways. There is a large storage closet there for stacking of chairs and tables. There's also a small kitchenette uh, countertop along the west edge of that room for, you know, coffee and drinks and, and things as people might have smaller meetings in there. As we continue through the lobby space, we have the washroom facility. So there is a universal washroom facility as well as the male and female. And we've gone on a bit of the higher end in terms of washroom counts in the event that you have a large function going on in the main hall as well as something in the multi-purpose room at the same time. On the opposite side of the lobby space, we have the, the main kitchen. And uh, the main kitchen is set up in a way that um, the community hall could be subdivided with a movable partition that it has passed through to each side of that. Uh, it's a large kitchen with a central island cooking and the like. Now for deliveries into the kitchen, um, persons would either come through the vestibule or we've also added an additional door through the parking lot side of the community hall for easy access for deliveries. There is a coat room adjacent to the main entry vestibule for patrons to hang up their coats. And we've provided a bar with a, a path, pass through just behind the coat room. At the opposite side of the main hall, there's a, a space for an electrical mechanical room as well as some additional storage. Then we have the main community hall. Now the setup here is shown as if it were a banquet or perhaps a wedding or that type of facility. 
um, and we'll show an alternate layout in a minute. Off of the main community hall, there's also a covered outdoor patio area with a large, uh, large opening for larger objects to come in and out. There's indoor storage associated with the main community hall as well as outdoor storage uh, that's accessible from the interior. That outdoor storage also has a pass through so that it can be set up for service. Next slide. This is the same floor plan, but showing an alternate layout. So this has a community hall subdivided into two spaces with a movable partition. Could be set up for meeting, training functions, physical activities such as yoga classes. Generally, the layout of the range of the building is the same. Next slide. This is a view from the corner of County Road 18 in Ewart. So you can see that we've added a bit of color there where we've got the building name. In the foreground, we don't really know what we're doing civilly, but we're trying to do some um, stormwater management uh, activities with the site. And then we've added a lot of glazing. So I mentioned early, earlier on that we're trying to take our cues from the light industrial building. Our intent here is to take a pre-engineered um, steel building and then actually make it look quite attractive by carving away and adding glazing and windows and canopies. Next slide. <clears throat> This is a view when you pull in the driveway. So you can see we've got a large canopy covering the main entrance as well as the, the multi-purpose meeting room. And then you can see to the left, larger openings into the community hall as well as the covered porch at the rear. Next slide. This is a view from the parking lot at the rear showing that large covered area. In the upper gabled end of that patio, we've added uh, wood slats so that we maximize the amount of light penetrating into the community hall while filtering it because that is a southern exposure. Next slide. This is the main entrance then. So you're coming over un underneath a wooden uh, clad canopy. We would look at using probably an aluminum type wood panel with it's uh, available nowadays for low maintenance. Next slide. Going through the main entrance, there are large sliding doors that will, would work automatically. So this slide is in the lobby space looking back towards that entrance. So we have a vaulted ceiling of the pre-engineered structure where we'd be looking to add some type of a wood paneling to, to soften it. At the ridge of that uh, space, we've added some skylights again to throw additional light into the interior. This is also looking back towards the glazing in the multi-purpose meeting room and the main office coming into the building. Next slide. This is a view from the main entrance looking out through the glazing towards County Road 18. The little alcoves that go off to the right are, are recesses that head into the washroom areas. Next slide. This is a view into the in the main community hall looking out towards the covered porch at the rear. So you can see the glazing as well beyond that looks into the parking lot. There is a large main beam down through the main uh, portion of the space that acts as the support for the partition that would subdivide the space into two. Next slide. This is a view from the exterior looking at the covered porch area. We've added uh, railings around that so that obviously you have uh, liquor license requirements that we have to enclose that space. You'll see in the community hall on this side as well that we're exploring the notion of adding some large fans so we don't have to rely as much on air conditioning during the warmer months of the year. Next slide. This is a slide just looking at the cost. So in terms of cost, we did have a local contractor and we say local of the uh, Grand Valley Construction Association area. Uh, take a look at this um, in terms of a cost and they helped us out with this. So based on the current area and the cost per square foot, the construction cost is estimated to be at $2.9 million. We add to that some furniture and equipment at $100,000. Uh, the professional fee for architectural, civil, structural, mechanical, electrical, and then building permit fees. So the total estimated project cost is at $3.3 million. Next slide. And then we also have taken a look at the construction schedule. So right now we're in the fall here. Project started up in the summer. We've been just finished going through design development. Now we're uh, in the fall looking at the um, County of Brand Council approval for the design. If we do get approval, we'll be looking at doing construction documents over the winter months. Uh, during that time, we'll also be looking to pre-qualify general contractors and major trades with a spring tender and construction starting late spring. That's everything if we want to open it up for questions. Well, thank you for getting that together for us so quickly. I was very pleased to be on this committee. <clears throat> and at this point, I'd like to thank Mr. Smith and Mr. Barton, who also sat on the committee, um, and uh, Councillor Gatward and, and Councillor Coleman. Uh, it was 
fun to watch the process start last year and end up this year and all the way things can be changed and everyone can end up being very happy. Are there any questions <clears throat> to any of the drawings that we can flip back and Councillor Gatward? Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I know the square footage for the um, vestibule or the entryway, um, it's shown as gray on the um, sketch that the architect supplied. And it does show it's um, 1100 or 1270 square feet. But um, can we have the width of what the width of that vestibule or entryway and the length? Yes, Mr. Sheffield. Yes, of course. You may not be able to see it well on the on the drawings that you have, but the width of that space is 5.935 meters, so just under 20 feet. And the overall length of the lobby space is just uh, about 18 to 19 meters because we have an indentation. There isn't a dimension directly through the lobby, but as reference point, the main community hall is 20.3 uh, meters. And if we take take a couple of meters off that for the vestibule and the indentation on the west side of the building, it's right about 18 meters for the length. So about six by 18. Is that typically the size of a, a vestibule or entryway that you would recommend for a hall for 300 people? Yes, we, we're looking to create enough crush space so that, for example, if you have two different training sessions going on in that community hall and they break out at the same time to use washrooms and take a break, that we have sufficient room for everyone to um, stand in that space or vice versa there might be other activities where you have a wedding going on and people are queuing up in there for a welcome line or something like that okay thank you you're welcome are there any other questions councillor cole or councillor miller please thank you mr mayor just a couple of questions for you to mr sheffield uh, thank you for your presentation um i want to ask one question about plumbing um you've got the washrooms the main washroom separated from the kitchen by the lobby, you've got the bars separated from the, the kitchen. Do you have all these different plumbing points add much to the overall cost? I, I, I don't know, I, I would try and get them all together, but what say you about that? Um, well, we certainly tried to do that with the main washrooms by having all of that in one location and putting the, the plumbing wall in one location for all that. So you'll, you'll see that we've, there's a plumbing wall between the male and female washrooms as well as serving the universal washroom and the custodial closet mop sink. Um, we suspect that that will connect through and it's very common in this to sanitary and water through the main lobby, which will then connect to the kitchen and small bar. It would have been very challenging, I think, and would have compromised the um, functionality of the layout to have all of that in, in one location given that we're, we're basically we'll run the main sanitary and through that lobby space and then run into each of those three separate spaces. Okay, yeah, I mean, uh, well, you're the professional I'll leave with you, but I mean, I, I could see where you could put the, the washrooms right behind the kitchen, you know, still in the lobby, but right behind the kitchen and then the bar just adjacent to the kitchen, but I'll leave it at that. Um, you mentioned the fans, you know, the big, the big fans uh, taking maybe some, some of the energy load off of the AC. Um, now, is, have you done any heat loss calculations or, or energy use calculations per square foot on this or anything like that? We have not done any energy modeling on the building thus far, no. Okay, and the reason I'm asking is because um, you have skylights, uh, you showed the south facing wall from the exterior, it looked like a lot of glass. I just, I see a tremendous amount of heat gain. So yes. um, I, I know you can fix that with certain glazing and all that stuff, so. Yes. Just, who, who looks after that aspect of it? Then? Of the of the mechanical systems, we have a mechanical engineer. Well, not just have... mechanicals, but making sure that you know, um, we, we try and keep our energy yep. usage low on that. Well, for the south end of the building, that you're right, it does have a lot of glazing. It is under a covered patio, and and uh, I noted that we're adding um, basically shading fins to the south end of that patio to further help add some shading to that. Um, we will have uh, probably perhaps on the west side of the building um, for if you imagine an afternoon, particularly in the summer, by the time the sun gets around there, it's quite warm. 
and potentially into the community hall, but we, we would be looking to obviously add window coverings to that, like roller shades. The other thing we'll try and do from a landscape point of view, which might not have been obvious in the site plan, is we'll plant that with appropriate trees so they can also act as a kind of a low tech shading device for the Western sun in the evening. Okay. All right. Just so, somehow, uh, well, I think a lot of us uh, like to keep in mind in the front of our, you know, conscious when we're designing these things. Okay. I'll leave it at that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Pierce, you're next. No, I'm fine, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. I love it. Any, all right. You're okay. Councillor Chambers, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to say a couple things. Um, <laughs> I am really impressed. Uh, I'm the counselor that lives probably the farthest away from this community center, and I'm really jealous. I, I really want to go to events there after seeing the pictures. I just wanted to say that uh, I know it's not been an easy uh, task for the committee, uh, so I commend yourself and, and Brian and Joan and, and uh, the two gentlemen that uh, from the community that uh, did a lot of work and uh, to make this thing uh, come to fruition. It wasn't easy at times, as I think Brian will. Uh, attest to and the other thing just a comment uh to the uh, designers it, it is amazing how such a simple rectangle can be made to look so good uh i'm not as uh, artistic as as the mayor he's a he's, he's a master at that i'm sure he would agree with me that architecturally uh for the county of brant it, it, it's going to be a, 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 a i won't say it's a plain but it, a plain building that has been turned into a remarkable building and I think that's a, a credit to the designers so let's get it built and uh, I'll be I want to be the one of the first ones to attend a community event there even though I'm a long way away thank you thank thank you Councillor Chambers Councillor Gatward uh, thank you Mr. Mayor I had one more um, question at the um, last meeting when these um, drawings were presented to us i don't believe um they were quite sure what the outside of the building materials were um, um mr sheffield has indicated it's a steel building um and the whole building will be steel siding and that entryway you said was aluminum that looked like wood um, and I suspect that's to keep the costs down. Have you ever used any of Stuby concrete products that are in our county? I um, guess that's a question. Or do you yes. know about that company and the products they have? Yes, we're very familiar with Stubby's concrete. Um, unfortunately, a precast concrete solution to your building would not be very cost effective. It's very cost effective when we're having large numbers of repetitive elements. So you'll often see precast concrete starting to be used for uh, large apartment buildings because you have repetitive wall panels and floor panels and the like. Um, we, we, chose this direction to try and fit in um, with the light industrial nature of that but make it as beautiful as we can so uh, it was described quite well uh, by the previous speaker that we were trying to take a simple industrial building because they're quite economical to build and add uh, nicer materials to it so we, yes we are using uh, metal siding but we'll look to use a warmer colored metal siding and a nicer profile we're trying to warm that up by adding the pre-finished uh, wood aluminum at the entryway. And of course, adding uh, glazing, you know, by punching mm -hmm. holes in it and, and creating that canopy. The canopy will be clad with like a uh, anodized aluminum paneling. So there's a okay. mix of materials. Thank you. And so that siding will be tougher than your ordinary housing aluminum siding. Yes, It'll it be is. Like it's commercial grade. grade that's right yeah. okay thank you and and i don't know about the inside i noticed there was a bench inside and oh. when we visited stubies um they had a lot of beautiful interior finishes too and maybe they're too expensive for the project i'm not sure but i i thought of them and when i looked at this building and wondered if 
anything from them could be incorporated since they're local and right in our community. But um, you know about them, so I'm sure you considered them. And and it does look lovely in the pictures. And I hope we can get those red maples to grow quickly because they look really nice too. Okay. So thank you. Welcome. Is there anyone else that wants to speak? Councillor Bell? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Beth. Uh, through you to the presenter. Did you uh, give any consideration to the energy usage of the building? And, and I'm specifically thinking about the placement of solar panels on, on the roof. Um, well, we didn't, and, and part of the reason for that is I'm not sure that the budget would support it. I mean, certainly we could entertain looking at that as we move into construction documents. And I would advise that if we do decide to go down that path, that we would want to carry it as a separate price to the tenders so that you're not committed to it uh, in the event that it comes in high. Yeah, I, I'm, thank you. I, I do appreciate that it adds ex extra capital, but it, the uh, operating cost reductions might be might swing the economic balance. So I'm glad you're going to carry it forward. Thank you. Are there any other questions? I would just like to add to it that it didn't show in the the drawings that uh, we are going to maybe uh, Michael and I are looking for a price point to do charging stations outside so that we could have some charging stations, maybe four or five or something outside. Um, there is, there is a price point that makes them reasonable uh, for the county. We don't have a lot now. In fact, we don't have any yet, but we're going to start putting them around. I would suggest this would be a good place to put them. I think the people of Canesville are going to be more than pleased with this. I think it's a beautiful, beautiful structure. I think it's going to fit in perfectly. It's going to, it's, it's not going to look as tough maybe as Joan thinks it's going to look, but it's, it's beautiful and it's very clever in the way we've laid out the space. When I say we, I mean the committee and Mr. Smith and Mr. Barton, who are very um, big users of, um, of facilities in the municipality, were very pleased. Um, it wasn't always easy. It ended up beautifully. And I would hope that you would support um, the work that went into this, not only by staff, but by the committee being Councillor Gatward, Councillor Coleman and myself and two members of the public. So uh, is there anyone else that has anything to add to the presentation? Seeing none, Councillor Coleman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Move on myself, second by Councillor Gatward that the presentation regarding the Canesville Community Center design be, be received for information. Thank you. Everyone's clear on what they're voting for? All those in favor? Opposed? You carried. Thank you, Mr. Sheffield, for everything you've done and how quickly you have done it for us. I'm hoping that you can sort of start digging pretty soon. Great. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Uh, Heather, has Miss Nectal and Mr. Means arrived yet? Um, one of them has. I think they may think the meeting starts at seven. So I would suggest maybe we just uh, give them a few more minutes if we want to move on to minutes and business arising. All right. Number five on the agenda then until Mr. Means and Mr. Nectal gets here. Um, Councillor Howes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, through you. Moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Bell that the County of Brant Council minutes of October 27th, November 3rd, and November 17th, 2020 be approved. Okay, so we're going to move them all at once until someone tears them apart. Is anyone going to tear them apart? Seeing none, call the vote. All those in favor to receive? Opposed? Carried? Any business arising from any of those three sets of minutes? Seeing none, we'll move on to 7A, please. Consent items, Councillor Pierce. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, through you, moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Chambers that the consent item 7AI to 7AIX be approved. Well, that's one to nine. Does anyone want to separate anything? Councillor Miller? Yeah, 7A4, 7A7. 
Thank you, Councilor Gatward. Councilor Gatward. Yes, I have. Um... Which which one are you separating, please? Actually, mine are under seven B. Sorry. My, 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 mine are under seven B, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Uh, we'll call the vote on everything but four and seven, please. All those in favor to receive. Opposed? Carried. Councillor Miller, you want to speak to number four, please? 7A4. Um, the recommendation, I don't have, um, these are just from my notes, but it says in the recommendation of this motion, funding for this project be from development charges and developer contributions. And yet when I go down, <laughs> and it talks about financial considerations. It says funding will be provided from development charges, future considerations in the 2021 budget and developer contributions. There's a difference in the recommendation and the financial considerations. And I wanna know which one is correct. All right, I'd like to know who's going to speak to that. Robin? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Michael was uh, trying to be here tonight to speak to this report. However, we've had a um, break in our fiber uh, technology, which he's looking after. So I told him that if there were any questions that I would, uh, if I didn't know the answer and I, I don't know the answer to this specifically, that I would get it and get back to you. Sorry, um, Mr. Mayor, I think Robin, I think you were speaking this, were you talking about Michael Hobbin? Yes, is that not? Um, no, no, I, I, I do have a question on that one, but I'm talking about 7A4, and that is the, um, the um, where we're looking at uh, going to direct negotiations with IBI to design <laughs> the roundabout. I thought it sounded My, my like apologies, I spoke too soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we're talking about roundabouts right now. Okay, my apologies. Your Worship, Mr. Walton can address the question. Thank you, Mr. Walton. So this um, report is to um, deal with the two roundabouts at the Highway 403 interchanges. And I think that probably the recommendation here got a little confused. We're actually gonna be building three roundabouts in this area. There's gonna be one just to the north of these ones, which um, um, at the Gurney pit entrance, and then these two, which are at the ramp terminals. Um, I actually believe there is a little bit of confusion that the, the majority of the funding for this will be from development charges. When you look at all three of them, there will be some developer contributions as well, which will be detailed over the next couple of budgets. Um, the funding for this is really for the design. The big money for this will come when we actually do the construction, which will be in the in the upcoming couple of years. So um, hopefully that brings a little bit of clarity to that. Sorry for any confusion. Councillor Miller. Yeah, well, OK, I, it's, I'm not quite clear, uh, Mr. Mayor, three to, three to rough. Are we, will we be seeing a request in the 2021 budget? And does that need to be part of this motion? I, I just want the two to line up because the report and the recommendation don't. Mr. Walton? I believe that there is money for this, the, the design of this project in the 2021 budget. Okay. Your Worship, if I could. Yeah, Mr. Bradley. Yeah, uh, through your worship and, and, and the treasurer may be able to weigh in this, but I, I think it's it's important for council to remember when we when we put projects in the development charge background study, there's always a small portion that's attributed to uh, existing development. Uh, there's a statute, some projects have a statutory uh, amount that has to come from the taxpayer. And then depending on the nature of the project, there would be a, a, a we call it a, a, a contribution from existing for existing taxpayers. So. It's important to remember that right now council is just approving the award of this. The budget for this is approved as part of the budget process. And that usually deals with the allocations from development charges or from the tax levy or from other contributions in this case uh, from builders. So hopefully that clarifies the question. Mr. Miller, you feel better about that? Uh, hold on a second here. Um, how do I get you bigger? Uh, I will, we'll leave it at that. It's just, I think it could have been a little clearer. So, but um, 
it's still as clear as mud, but we'll, we'll move on because we've got a big agenda ahead of us. Are you comfortable moving on though? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Councillor Gatward, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, when I read this, I thought it was only for two roundabouts. And Rob just said it's for three. So I guess on the diagram, which is on the last page, it shows one proposed roundabout location at the corner of Rest Acres and the Gurney pit area, I believe that is, which is 989 Rest Acres Road. Um, we do have one already at the Brant Sports Complex corner. Where are the other two? Mr. Walton? Through the, through the mayor to Councillor Gatward. This design um, assignment is for two at the ramp terminals. We, we recently awarded the design for the Gurney Pit Roundabout to a different consultant. Um, so oh. listen, we had no control over these because it, the, our dealings for this on the MTO property have to be through the MTO. And uh, we've been working uh, quite diligently to get a, a better um, um, arrangement with them on these, which we've been mostly successful on. That's why we brought this back to you, to you now. It would have been nice to actually bring them back all at the same time, but we weren't in a position to do that back in September, I believe, when the oh. last appointment was done. It's clear now. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions regarding number four? Seeing none, let's call the vote on number four, please, to receive. Opposed? And carried. Councillor Miller, could you speak to number seven for us, please? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's just a, it's a question um, because in the report, uh, Michael talks about, uh, Michael Hobbin uh, talks about other, um, I think we're going to save $12,000 a year by taking uh, some of our communications off other towers. Um, is there been any discussion or talk of renting out space on these these towers to other potential users? Because these these are some large towers, 150 foot and 100. Robin, do you have answers on that one? Robin, there you go. Uh, okay. Um, I don't specifically, but I believe that uh, they may be talking with BME about um, providing services off the towers, um, but I can get back to you with information on that. Okay. Um, I suspect there would be some interest. Um, as you know, broadband is a hot topic right now. Lots of public money and private money is going into mm -hmm. that. So I think if we could look into that and actively maybe solicit it because again they're going up and and i don't know how well people know about it but it's like i said i think there's a lot of potential for some money so something maybe you guys uh certainly michael hopefully can look into so mm -hmm. thank you mr mayor thank you are there any other questions or concerns about number seven before councillor gatward Unmute. Thank yep, you. You yeah thank you mr mayor i i um I know we have had difficulties in these areas. And when I saw this, I thought, well, I'm glad we're going to support the fire department and get them a better uh, communication system and and the staff in the area as well. Um, it's seven o'clock. I'm wondering, have uh, when we erect towers for other communications, we circulate notices to the community um, they're posted on site have we done anything in the scotland or oakland communities to let them know about these towers being erected who knows that answer uh, through you, mr mayor i don't believe that there's been notices circulated at this point Thank you, Councillor Wheat. Um, when you're constructing something for the fire service, you don't have to circulate the notice. That's a safety measure. We've got it up on Water Tower in Paris. We also have one on the Water Tower in St. George. Thank you, Councillor Wheat. Are there any other comments or questions for number seven? Councillor Gatward? 
these are not water towers. These are being built as standalone towers, similar to the one that we just had all the kerfluffle with on Mount Pleasant Road and the residents got it moved. And I do understand that they will be for um, communications. Um, will they improve the service to the residents in those areas? I guess through you to our technical staff, because if they will, there shouldn't be any um, complaints, but um, there was a tower at one point erected at the Oakland Community Center for wireless. And I'm not sure if it didn't work well or why we have to put a higher one in. Maybe that's why, or maybe they're gonna extend the one that was there. Um, can anyone answer that? And I'd still like to know if we're going to let the residents know, or are they just gonna find out when they start building? building this. Who knows the answer for Councillor Gatward? Mr. Bradley, do you? Hey, through you, maybe Robin has the answer. My, I mean, with all due respect, I think it would be inappropriate for us to provide notice to residents before council approved it. So mm -hmm. uh, these are municipal, these are municipal projects, usually council would approve them and then we proceed with any communication that we would require, just like we would with any project. So I, I, I would suspect that's that's the answer to the question. I think there was also a question of, of service to residents. And usually uh, once we would put a tower up, um, um, our, our, our colleagues at Brand Municipal Enterprises, they have, um, you know, we have relationships with a lot of the providers in the area, internet providers in the area. And we would let them know that there's, 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 uh, there's assets available that we can partner with. And then we usually, they would then be retailing out to the residents. So if there's certainly opportunity, as Councillor Miller mentioned, and Councillor Gatward uh, mentioned, to uh, to use these municipal assets to uh, improve residents' access to internet and to generate a bit of income for the municipality, we would definitely be looking into that. Hopefully that answers the question. Thank you, Michael. It's Robin, I bet, I bet you that's what you were going to say, Robin. Uh, pretty close. I was just uh, going to add to that that, um, public internet access at the library uh, will be greatly improved. Um, I know that's different than what you were referring to, but um, that's another uh, public another internet plus, access. I did read that in the report. Yes, mm -hmm. I did read that in the report. Thank you very much. That answers my questions. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, we'll vote on number seven. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Uh, takes uh, Heather. Have our is our delegation here yet, Mr. Means? And uh, they're not yet, but it is after seven now. So if you want to move forward, I can let Lou knuckle in, and we can see where we can get started, or we can do seven B, whatever you prefer. Let, let's let's finish with the delegations. Do you think? Let, let's. Okay. Is she prepared to fly solo without Art? Hello. I suggest we move on, Mr. Mayor. She's here now, John. Is that Mayor Bailey? It is. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Would you like to would you like to talk to us? I think so. Is okay. Art Means present as well? No, Art's not here yet. So do you want to do you want to go solo or do you want us to come back to you? Well, um, he's doing part of it. You know, you got to share. So uh, All right, I would rather him be present. What? OK, then what we'll do then is we'll wait for Art to show up and we'll move on in our agenda and we'll come back to you. OK, very good. All right. I'm still here. That's good. Thank you. OK, thank you. We'll carry on now then, please, to 7B. Is it seven, are we on 7B? Yes, 7B. Uh, Councillor Wheat, please. Let's move by myself, second by Councillor House, consent items in under section 7B, 1 through 19 be received. Thank you. Does anyone want to separate anything? Councillor Miller, first, please. Uh, 7B6, Mr. Mayor. 
B6 and yep. Councillor Gatward. Uh, 7B2, 7 and 15, Mr. Mayor. 7 and 15. And number two. And number two. It sounds like we're playing bingo here. Can I, we'll, we'll call the vote on everything but 6, 2, 7, and 15. All those in and favor? Six. Oh, and, and, six. And, and 6, yep. All those in favor? Okay, so we're going to talk about 6, B for uh, B6, please. Yeah, okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, very quickly, um, I believe if I can read my chicken scratch, well, um, I think that's where uh, we got notices from Brantford, the city, uh, regarding their master, their transportation master plan and their master servicing plan. And they are looking for comments from the county. And given our close proximity, I would hope we could provide some. So I'm just wondering. Um, who from staff would be, be, be looking at that? Who from staff is going to speak to that? Michael? Yes, uh, thank you, Your Worship. Through you, uh, um, uh, Mr. Walton's group will look into that. They'll, uh, they'll determine the appropriate staff members. I don't know whether Mr. Walton has any addition to that. Mr. Walton. Through, through the Mayor, Councillor Miller, um, we have had um, um, discussions with, with the city and uh, we'll um, uh, follow up on the final plan uh, during the 45 year. They're actually not asking for comments. They're putting it out for the review period for us to question things that are in there. It isn't a commenting period, but uh, we certainly will be, uh, uh, have been already and we'll be looking into it further. I'm just, in light of our last meeting, the Paris uh, Master Servicing Plan, I guess it's, it's um, I guess it's too premature in our process to, interject that into their process am i am i correct on that i believe that you'll find that the considerations for at least the um, um water servicing to paris is is considered in their plan and I, I will confirm that back to council in the future once i've had a chance to read their final plan oh okay that, that, that's actually good to hear okay uh thank you very much thank you um councillor gatward you want to speak to b2 uh yes mr mayor thank you I um, appreciated receiving this information from uh, General Manager Stevenson. And um, at our last detachment meeting, um, the minutes state that um, the committee members will be invited to um, sit on the working group for the uh, future opening in the spring. So I would like to just um, volunteer from the detachment committee. Uh, there may be others, I'm not sure, but I would like to volunteer to sit on that committee when they start the meetings for planning that event. So I wanted you and Ms. Stevenson to know that. Okay, uh, we, we have spoken of that and we weren't going to have council members on that, uh, on that committee. That doesn't mean it can't happen, it just wasn't going to happen. Um, I, well, the minute, to, sorry, the minutes yeah. say we would be invited That's to, right. yeah, so, um, all right, well, since, are you going to be not, on? No, I'm not going to be on it actually. Oh. Um, oh. since that, since that meeting was <laughs> dissolved, since that committee was dissolved, we've had all kinds of things happen. There's going to be a soft opening, as you know, later on this month. And with COVID coming, everything we wanted with the brass bands and the marching groups and the big, the big grand opening we were always hoping for, because it's been so long in, in the making, isn't going to happen, Councillor Gatward. Um, and I don't know, um, I, I think the committee is going to be very small. It's going to have to do with staff and a couple of OPP officers or uh, representatives. I don't know that there's any room for council on that committee. If you want to volunteer, I can take that back to Ms. Stevenson. Um, but I've stepped away from it just because um, once it's open, which will be later on this week or next week, um, it will be open. So anything else would be truly and, and fully ceremonial. And I think that the people who do that best should be part of putting that together, which would be the OPP and staff. Uh, I don't know how much we could contribute to it if you feel you could contribute to it and want to sit on it. I can take it back to Ms. Stevenson and tell her that you would 
be willing to or you want to for some reason, um, but that's that's up to you. I won't be sitting on it when the last committee was was um, had come to an end. Uh, we are now leaving the second opening to people that do that all the time. So I don't know how you feel about that. If you, I, I don't want to slight you or feel that you're not involved. Um, but we did decide that the council wouldn't be on that second committee. Um, I know that the minutes, the, the minutes do say that, but the minutes didn't say we were going to be in the middle of a pandemic and that things were going to be the way they are now. So they, they do sort of um, uh, balance things out, but that doesn't mean you can't help out if that's what you want to do. But maybe you could just help out as Joan Gatward and not help out as, as a counselor because we did determine we didn't need counsel on that committee. How do you feel about and, that? And who's we, Mr. Mayor? Who was we that determined we didn't need counsel on that committee? It, it was actually myself and Ms. Stevenson that, that decided we were going to leave it up to people that do, do these things for, for a living um, and that there was no need for counsel to be involved. I, I'm not sure what, uh, what purpose counsel would have putting together a party or an opening of something that's already been opened. The, the, the people that should be at the, the opening next week will be myself, a minister to bless the site, the chair of the police services board. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. All right. And, yeah, and I read the report. Yeah, and that, that will be the opening so that we can we can have the building opened on the same year as the cornerstone that says 2020, that's why we're doing it now. And as as time goes on, I think the guild is going to come off the lily, Councillor Goward, and I'm not sure that COVID is going to allow us to do very much. But but that really, truly, I'm not trying to keep you away from that committee, but if you want to sit on it or contribute to it, um, I can let Ms. Stevenson know you're interested. Yes, please do that. Thank you. I'll do, I'll do that. Thank you. Anything else to say about uh, B2? Very, we're very excited now that you've separated Councillor Gatwood that the opening of the OPP station is going to happen very shortly. It's been a long time coming and I'm the only person that has sat in every position on the, P, uh, the, OP, the police services board as a municipal appointment, a provincial appointment, a chair, and then a mayor. So I, I've seen it right through to the finish and I'm very, very excited. I couldn't be more excited. And I know that you're a little disappointed, Councillor Gatward, as I would be if I were in your position, but pandemics um, don't look at details. Well, I'm excited it's open, hooray. <laughs> anyway, number seven, Mr. Mayor. Yes, County Councillor Gatward. The number, yep. Councillor, County of Norfolk has um, put forward a, a resolution re elicit cannabis operations. And as everyone knows, we already have um, shut down one of these in our, our county and um, there could be more. Um, and hopefully our OPP are hard at work um, finding them through citizen tips or whatever means they use, and I'm sure they are. And um, the information in this resolution and the information from Debbie LaFrance um, from Norfolk County was very um, good information. And I think that we should um, support this resolution um, through maybe a letter or if council wants to, um, endorse it that's fine too point of, order, okay. point of order mr mayor i, I believe councillor gatward just moved from one uh item she to did. the other okay <laughs> just wanted to make sure i didn't miss a vote there no uh, no she, okay. she did we went we went to number seven okay but yeah, we're still going to vote on both correct yes we're going to vote we're going to vote on all of them together once we're finished discussing all of them thank you mr mayor councillor gatward anything else to say so, so no. what we could what we can do is we can either send a letter of support from the entire council, or I I am prepared to send a letter of support from the mayor's office, supporting Norfolk if you if you like, uh, whatever way you want it to read, Councilor Gatwin. We are in support of number seven. Yeah, and it is 
supporting our police services too. Thank you. Councilor Wheat? Councilor Wheat? I might, if I might, Mr. Mayor, I'd suggest that you vote on each one of them separately, like number two and number six, uh, to clear them off before we start talking about number seven. <laughs> All right, Councilor Wheat. Uh, let's, let's do number B6 first, please. We've discussed it. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried B2. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. All right, we finished talking about number seven. Councilor Gatward, what do you want to do? Do you want to ask council to send a letter of support to Norfolk or do you want me to do it? Oh, well, it's more than a letter to Norfolk. It's a letter to um, the premier and, and the various uh, agencies listed there because we agree with what Norfolk is trying to achieve here. So um, an, a letter from your office is fine unless council wants to support the resolution and send one from Brant County as well. Okay, Councilor, we, we can CC as many people as you like on that letter, Council. Uh, Heather, do you have something to add to that, Madam Clerk? Just standard way we would deal with this is we would just have a motion of support for the resolution and then we would just send that on to all the members CC'd. Thank you. Councilor Gatwood, you're gonna make that motion? Yes, I will, Mr. Mayor. Looking in for support a of Norfolk and in the support of our police service. Looking for a seconder. Councillor Pierce, thank you. That's the, the suitable second. That's great. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those. Oh, Councillor Miller. Are you Quickly, voting? Mary, thank you. Yeah. No, yeah, I'm, I'm voting for it. Just, um, no, I, I appreciate actually what Councillor Gatt was doing here because um, many discussions, many groups of people, citizens, residents, um, our MP, uh, Phil McCollman, our MPP, Will Boomer, and Actually, it was Phil McCollum that first mentioned this to me. He says well, the, he, he alone cannot fix this. He says he needs as much pressure as can be brought to bear by uh, the province, by different agencies, by different ag groups, by different municipalities. So I think I think the more pressure we can bring to bear on, on a lot of these issues, obviously, that affect us, it just helps. Every little bit helps. So I, I, I hope we support. Uh, I hope we support. Norfolk in this. If we support it, it'll be a great letter, Councillor Biller. <clears throat> Any other comments or concerns? Call the vote. All those in favor to support. It'll be a great letter. Thank you, Councillor Gatward. B fifteen. Who's who's is that? Oh, that's mine, Mr. Mayor. Um, okay. And um, in reading the library board minutes, it. Um, it was nice they asked our CAO to be a guest speaker at their meeting and he presented a um, presentation on a community hub there, which would include the library. Have we had that presentation at council? Because I don't think I've seen that. I, I think it's been mentioned at the council table, but I don't think I've ever seen a presentation or a drawing of what it might look like. Mr. Bradley, have you got a secret presentation? Yeah, yeah, for you, Mr. Chair, your, your worship, no, I don't. And so council will recall, I believe it was in November of last year, you did receive a fairly comprehensive report on a downtown community hub uh, that would include uh, a Brent count, new county of Brent, main branch library. And that was approved and, and, and staff were recommended, or staff were directed to begin the process of that, um, noting it's, it was projected to be a long process. The library board asked uh, me through the chief executive officer for the library to, uh, to just outline how the library would be included in that project. And I drafted up um, uh, a bit of a, of a flow chart that represented the same process we went through with the, the Brant Community Health Hub and presented them to the, that, that flow chart to the library board on how the board and its staff would be included in that uh, community hub um, project. So again, the, the community hub uh, project itself was approved uh, for commencement back in November through a comprehensive report. And then what I provided at the library board was just an, uh, an understanding of how they would fit into that council directed project. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Councilor Gatwood, does you. that answer you? Yeah. Yeah, 
Yeah, it does. And um, I don't know if there was pictures or drawings of that, what it would look like, because I don't remember that from last November. I'm sorry. That's OK. <laughs> Maybe somebody could resend it to me. <laughs> I'd appreciate Mr. that. Mr. Thank Bradley. you. Yeah, Your Worship, to confirm that we ha we haven't done any conceptual drawings. There was a site, a very uh, uh, a rudimentary site plan that, that was a part of that council report, um, which indicated where we thought the building could fit on the uh, on the downtown site here, which it would include the uh, the former Mechanic Street OPP detachment. So uh, that report can be recirculated if requested. I think thank that, you, Councilor Gottward would like to see that. I think Michael. Yeah, thank you. Or I can look it up myself. It's okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Any other comments or concerns about B15? Seeing none, call the vote. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried? Uh, Madam Clerk, has Art Means arrived yet? Yes, he has. I'm just letting the two of them in again. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello, Art. Hello, David. How okay. are you? Uh, still alive. That's good. Although you are the late art means right now, you know that. Technology is a wonderful thing. It is. So Embrace welcome to it. the county. Of, welcome to the county of Brand. If you want to begin your presentation, you have ten minutes, and at one minute left, we are going to give you a warning. Okie doke. No problem. Okay. Thank, thank you. <laughs> Well, greetings, Mayor Bailey and councillors of Brant County, wherever you are out there. I'd like to introduce my associate Art Means, and I am Mary Lou Necto. You please call me Lou. We are members of the board for the Brant Land Trust. We held our inaugural meeting in December 2018. Our board members are Dwayne Brown, Doug Brown, not related, Stan Gorecki, Larry Millers, and Rob Necto. Can you hear me okay? We can. Okay. We cover the geographical region of the County of Brant and the City of Brantford. We recognize that these lands are the traditional territories of the neutral Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee peoples. These peoples are the original caretakers of these territories, the people that lived on and worked intimately with these lands. Mm -hmm. We sent off to you um, a presentation and Art is going to pick up the uh, pieces here and speak. Thank you. Well, uh, basically this is an introduction to the existence of uh, Brent Land Trust. Uh, there should have been an introductory uh, letter uh, in your packages. I don't know if you had time to read them all or not. Uh, I want to say thank you for giving us this opportunity. Uh, just a few points I'll cover in our uh, letter for those who didn't have time because I know your packages are often quite large. Uh, if you're not familiar with a land trust, it's a nonprofit charitable organization that has as one of its core activities, the acquisition of land or interests in land, such as conservation easements, excuse me, <clears throat> for the purpose of conservation. Land trust is incorporated under the laws of Ontario and Canada and registered with CRA under the Income Tax Act. Uh, basically, if someone wishes, someone wishes to donate land, they get a tax credit and uh, we get the land. Uh, I should also mention that any land we acquire uh, does not fall under the maintenance requirements of the uh, county or the city, which I know is important to uh, people who manage the uh, lands of those territories. <coughs> There are uh, 32 registered land trusts in Ontario at this time. Some of those that you might be familiar with are the Long Point Basin Land Trust, uh, the Lower Grand River Land Trust, and of course the Oak Bridges Moraine Land Trust, just to give you some examples. Uh, then we have the Brant Land Trust, which we have uh, Land Trust has been created to provide an avenue for the conservation of some of our lands to those people who appreciate their land and the areas of natural sensitivity. As noted, 
in the province of Ontario document a place to grow, we must continue to value what makes this region unique to ensure the sustainable prosperity of Ontario, its people, and future generations. While well, growth is an important part of the vibrant diversification and urban, of urban and rural communities and economies, the magnitude of growth that is expected over the coming decades <clears throat> presents several challenges, such as unmanaged growth can degrade air quality, water resources, natural heritage resources, such as rivers, lakes, woodland, etc. <clears throat> The impact of, of, excuse me, of a challenged, challenging climate are already felt. Communities and infrastructure must be adopted to a more resilient greenhouse gas emissions across all sectors of the economy. These need to be reduced. Our valuable water resources also need to be protected. However, this is all with good intentions. But if you witness the violent development of areas around Milton and the escarpment, you will see that there is little protection of the envir natural environment, except in those areas which prove to be geographically a challenge to the developer. Brant County and the citizens of Brant County have this opportunity to protect its own land, and it needs the tools and the partnerships to achieve that goal. Brant Land Trust is one of those partnerships and one of those tools. Within Brant County, the council is undergoing many initiatives protect, to protect the environment. And currently, there is the tree conservation bylaw, which is under review. To quote, one of the county's strategic priorities is for sustainable and managed growth. And tree conservation is an integral part of the promotion, promoting sustainable and managed growth priorities. However, at this time, there is little in the way of recognition or policy to protect these unique features of Brant County. We are hopefully providing one avenue uh, for you to do that. Uh, Lou, you have some conclusions? Uh, I just want to step back to the uh, trees and the old growth woodlots. They provide a higher value for carbon sequestering. The Escarpment Biosphere Conservancy has a program where values are calculated for the woodlots and wetlands, which can be used to balance the carbon offset for the county. Under the provincial SOLRIS, Southern Ontario Land Resource Information System, uh, these facts were pulled up about Brant County. It has a total forest cover of 11,016 hectares. The total county area is 68,526 hectares, with a percentage of county forest cover as only 16%. So this year, with the experiencing the changes undergoing uh, going across this planet, there are many members of the community who took the COVID opportunity to embrace the many parks, conservation areas, and grow. If you need to know a river access, Ask one of the newfound river users. The Land Brent Land Trust appreciates the time we've taken today out of your schedule, and we look forward to working with planning and council on any upcoming projects. Thank you. Well, thank thank you for coming and speaking to us tonight. I'm going to open this up now to questioning. There are questions for you, um, Councillor Laferrier, you're first. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you to Lou. Lou, I've known you a long time now. Uh, yes. I'm really happy about this. I think it was a year, a year and a half ago, we had a phone call about this. Um, I, I just, I just want to say that the the stick to itiveness on this and uh, the foresight. I'm really happy uh, we're going to get the support this in the near future. I don't have questions. I just wanted to thank folks for thinking ahead and doing something that uh, is good for all. Thank you, Mark. Thank, thank you, Councillor. Councillor Bell, please. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you to the presenters. Uh, you said in your notes that Brant County is experiencing exponential urbanization can you put any dimensions on that because without with the exception of paris i don't see significant urbanization and i think you may have painted the whole county with a brush that perhaps should only be used on paris at the moment well for example saint george there's growth happening and 
a lot of this, uh, the places to grow strategy, there's a lot of pressure put on every, every municipality to have greater infill and to also expand to provide a better tax base. And hopefully that tax base uh, is going to help from business tax base, which is higher and not just residential tax base. Yeah, I'm not against the, the, the uh, philosophy that you're promoting, but I think we have to be careful that we understand the right statistics. And I've asked the county staff if they can tell me how much agricultural land we have and how that land has changed over the last 10 years and how it will change if we execute the targets that have been set to us by the province in the Places to Grow Act. But the feedback I'm getting is right now we are containing ourselves within the current urban settlement boundaries. So we're not actually taking any more agricultural land as such. And so I, I think we just need to be sure. I, I'm, I'm a townie, so I come into this place and think, my God, there's just so much agricultural land. It's unbelievable. And if I, I, my guess is that 95% of Grant County is effectively agricultural or non-urban land. And, and the growth that we are going to see in the next couple of years might take another half a percent. That, that's my thinking. But I'd love to know the statistics. And if you have them, I, I'd love to, to hear from you. Well, if you look at what are the role of the land trust, it takes the ecologically sensitive areas and it pulls it away from, uh, say, a developer going in and he wants to do infill, fill in a wetland, do whatever. Whereas a land trust would take that land and be able to protect the land. So we're not out to try to uh, purchase any new land or move anything away from what the county's intent is through zoning. You know, what we would do would be take lands which have an ecological purpose and protect it. And we try to focus on the Grand River and along the Grand River watershed. Because you, you know you got a lot of inner bodies, and you also have a lot of water bodies. You know where property should protect, be protected right along the water water courses or the wetlands. Yeah, I, I'm very supportive of what you're trying to do. I just think we need to have the statistics on a more general basis to back up the uh, the overall programs. Mm -hmm. Understood. Thank you, uh, Councillor Miller. You're next, please. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, a couple questions, if I could, through you to uh, the presenters. Just in, in uh, Art, I yeah, no, I, I read uh, everything you guys had sent to us earlier, and I will say I was impressed not only with the way it was written, how well it was written, and how much information you guys have managed to put together for a volunteer group. I think it's, it was fantastic. Um, I wanted to ask, these land trusts, they seem to be the, the what you guys were talking about are, are seem to be more of a conservation land trust and maybe this is an easy question i don't know but is that the same thing as as the agricultural land trust that uh, some of us read about periodically in the odd uh, farm newspaper no those are considered farm land trusts which is a little different we are more for conservation because there's different types of trusts like the lower grand river uh land uh, trust is for the Ruthven property. It was handed this big piece of property, so it's more of a heritage trust. Uh, well, what you're talking about is more of a farm trust, which mm -hmm. uh, sustainable branch, it would fall into that category a little bit more than what we would. Okay, so they're a bit different. Okay. They are. Um, okay, thank you. And then my second question, my last question is, um, I, I think you guys have mentioned this already. We're going through our official plan. And I'm I'm just wondering, and maybe this isn't a fair question to you guys, but if you know, I'd like to find out. Um, in the hierarchy of legal bodies and all that good stuff, um, say a, a piece of land was designated a conservation land trust. And uh, in the official plan, it's designated something else you know maybe we need it for a uh, roundabout or or something else what what, what has legal precedent do you, are you guys aware of that well art do you want to tackle that or shall i answer it i i truly don't have an answer for that well if it okay. falls i'll leave it there it's it, 
if it it's a falls bit of a under, under the ecological gift program, it's registered through the CRA. And, you know, in one sense, why put a roundabout or intrude on any piece of property that's of a sensitive nature anyways? You know, leave it and try to work around that because it could be problematic down the road. As we know, we know how high the floodwaters are in Port Dover now. And, you know, we've got climate change, which is going to cause more problems as time goes on. So no, okay. you would, you, it would have to go through the Ministry of the Environment and Climate Change if the county wished to put some kind of a roundabout or anything in that area, because it's all registered on title through the Ecological Gift Program. Okay, and since we are going through our official plan, I just follow up there. Um, can we get any chunks of land that are, say, in a conservation land trust? Can we get those incorporated into the official plan, or is that too specific? Well, that's what we've been working through with planning, Amanda, and some other planners. It's, uh, it's excuse me if I don't know names, but it's all been kind of slow in coming through. So we're trying to, uh, in the new official plan, address more the role of land trusts, because land trusts want to work with the counties and the municipalities. We're, uh, we're not out to try to take any land that you know, could be built on or zoned for building away from the municipality. And if, for example, somebody says, oh, I want to give you this parcel of land, well, if, say, Paris or, or uh, the county wished to have that land as a building down the road, then we would have to say to that property owner, you know, this is not the right thing to do, that we can gladly take this piece of property, but we would have to sell it because it's inappropriate that, that we don't try to work with uh, planning and the county. Okay, fair enough. I'm still trying to learn a lot about trust, and uh, I think this 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 helps everybody. But like I said, I'd like to I'd like to learn more, and I, not tonight, but I'd like to learn more how this uh, process can be, um, you know, put put put. Uh, how, how do I say this? a process to the whole thing as far as you you know you guys working with planning and the official plan and all that stuff. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Miss. That's Thank what you. it's all about. Thank you. Any other questions to Lou or Art? I, I have a couple of comments then if there's no other questions. Um, I, I'm hoping that you're preaching to the to the choir here, Art and Lou. I think that uh, the, the, around this table, this council table, I think that we're all sort of mandated to protect things um, like the river and the, and, and the, uh, the, the areas that we, we cherish, the walking trails, the paths. No one was more upset to walk by the top of Mile Hill and see the Piavati bush laying on the side of the road and left there for over a year. It broke my heart because I remember walking through those fields, or those, that bush with Peter Piavati years ago and him telling me the story of when he planted them. Um, those kinds of things are heartbreaking to, to watch. But uh, as you may know, Chuck Beach is a very good friend of the county. That's right. And and he he comes and goes and i've known him for a long time as i've known art for a long time and i understand whatever art puts his mind to he's very he's very loyal and he's very dedicated and I, i'm glad to see art here tonight um but we we i hope you're preaching to the cat i really believe that this table is full of people that that are that think like you do and and uh, we do have our eye on saint george because it hasn't begun yet uh, Paris got a little bit ahead of us um, through nobody's fault, really, uh, just what happened. And uh, we do have our eye on the rest of the county, and we are going to be very aware of what's going on before it happens. So thank you for your presentation. Thank you for what you do and what you believe in. And I hope, as uh, I said before, that you are preaching to the choir. Okay, well, thank you. And if you have any other questions, please contact us. Thank you. And as you can see, I have my banner ready to go. It's I just, see that. Cannot, I, cannot do I presentations think. yet. <laughs> there, there you go. Yeah, yeah. With all that being, with all that being said, Councillor McAlpine, can I call on you? Yes. Uh, moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Lafere that the presentation from Brandt Land Trust be received as information. All right. Any other questions or concerns? Before we vote, nice to see you again, Art. Nice to meet you, Lou. 
All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Thank you for your time. Thank you. I'd like to, uh, like to wish you all a very Merry Christmas and uh, a safe and happy new year. Thanks, Art. To you and Sheila, too. Good night. Okay. Good night. Bye bye. Okay. We're now on to staff reports. Are we all ready? Does it, do we need a break? Are we, are we good? Everyone's good? Staff reports 8A. Kathy. <laughs> Are you going to speak to the report or are we just going to vote to receive? Does somebody have it to move it? Uh, yep. yeah, I Councilor have to move it. I'm just waiting for the mayor. Councilor uh, Ferrier, please. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just waiting for you to call on me there. Uh, moved by myself and seconded by Councilor Miller. That staff report RPT-20-196 River Access Mitigation Strategy be approved. Questions, comments to the report? Councillor McAlpine, you're first. I just had a, like, I've been sort of thinking through this and talking to some of the local residents there a little bit further. Um, when you give the numbers for the access to the river, 55,000 per year, okay, and that would include people that are accessing that parking lot and the area for the river um, trails as well and fishing and things like that and biking and those numbers at least at the eric thomason one could probably easily be 50 60 percent higher than that would i be correct in saying something along that line kathy yes through you mr mayor uh, the counter is actually down at the edge of the river so it doesn't really yeah account for the trail we do have a separate counter on the trail um, just uh, to the north of the parking lot i guess it is so there are additional uh, information on that if you if you wish to receive that i could send it to you yeah that that would, that would be appreciated um the, the challenge i i have it whether this is kind of a, appropriate, like the number like of people that are going into these areas, given that they are predominantly a um, residential areas, because it has continuously been growing over the last 15 years since it began. And I think we need to look with your report into more of the, um, the parking lot and how we can sort of maybe have people reserve parking spaces and look into more how that we could maybe have just permitted parking along the roadways along Princess Street and Forbes Street so that the residents have uh, more access to that parking rather than just people from the outside the county. Kathy, comments on that? Through you, Mr. Mayor, I do believe the um, roads uh, manager has already spoken about the permitting in the past. It is something mm -hmm. if council directs us to, we could look at further. I do also have a, a meeting with the GRCA this week to look at the parking lot specifically in that general area. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did speak to Councillor McAlpine a couple of weeks ago about some potential to uh, use some other funds if if they are available to uh, look at a kind of a plan A and a plan B option um, to maybe expand it even further than we had initially contemplated. So that will be something I will discuss with them uh, this week. Yeah. Yeah, the Brent Waterways and also the Lions Club there have expressed an interest maybe in being involved in that. And uh, so the um, I'm just wondering, there was a second option there where there was um, technology that might be available for um, managing the parking lot. Would that include people could uh, book the parking in advance kind of thing, sort of mitigate too many people coming into the area? Kathy? Yes, through you, Mr. Mayor, that is correct. Uh, there is technology out there to do that. Obviously there's a cost and there's an enforcement piece of it uh, that would be involved with that type of scenario, but it's certainly something that's uh, 
we could look at further and get more details if, if council wishes. It's something that I'd like to see us direct staff to look into further. Okay, Kathy, you can take that back. Councillor Wheat, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, through you. Um, I'm, I'm gonna be supporting, I'm gonna be voting yes when it comes time to vote, but I'm a frickle bit disappointed that there's not more community involvement from Glenn Morris in this report, particularly for, for the parking part of it. Because when you look at it, the numbers have gone up the past few years and by 2024, my prediction, they're gonna be even double to what they are now. Uh, I look at the fact that, I'll just pull a name out of the sky, a fake name, his name's Bob. On Saturdays, he used to go to the Blue Jays. So he they have 10 Saturday home games, so he buys those 10 games. Cost him probably 500 bucks for his ticket for the 10 Saturdays. Spends another $500 on beer and hot dog. But last summer, he discovered he couldn't go to the Blue Jays because they weren't playing in Toronto. So I bought a kayak and he came out to Glen Morris. Didn't cost him anything other than the cost of the kayak and that kayak will last him a long time. And he enjoyed his trip down the Grand River. So he's gone home, he's phoned, He's told his neighbor, Charles, hey, Charles, you don't have to go to the Leafs and the Blue Jays. You can take that money and buy a kayak or a canoe and follow me to Glen Morris. It's a lot more fun. We enjoy the sunshine and the fresh air. Maybe COVID-19 caused this, but now it's been discovered and they're going to keep coming. There's nothing better than word of mouth and it's going to get expanded. So I think we've got to start planning for where are we in 2022, 2023, 2024. As uh, Councillor Pierce will recall a few years ago, we went through this disaster at Dean Park. And <clears throat> hopefully we've got things in, that, in the Dean Park area solved, but it was a lot of problems and a lot of headache for those sitting on council at the time. And I think we've got to get that community of Glen Morris right at the table with us and start looking at this thing because it's going to grow next year, the year after, and the year after, and the year after because people have discovered us. It's just like the downtown of Paris. They've discovered the restaurants. They've discovered the unique shops. And they're coming and they're going to keep coming. They're not going to stop coming here, folks. So let's start looking, where are we three, four or five years from now, Kat, um, and start planning for that. There's a parking lot up on Dunbar Street by the community hall. That's gonna get, that's gonna have to get addressed in the next few years too. So let's include that. And how do we get people from, from Dunbar Street down to the river? The, the outfitters, <clears throat> I think have grown to their capacity now and we got to start thinking about the residents. The outfitters are going to look after themselves. They really are. We don't need to worry about them anymore. They're going to be self-sufficient. I am going to vote yes, but I think we've got to take a harder look at this and we've got to include the residents a little bit more. This has been a problem for me for the past 15 years and it didn't get any better and it isn't going to get better. We have to try and do something. Thank you. Sorry for all Thank your time. Thank you, Councillor Wheat. Is there anyone else that wants to speak to Councillor Pierce, your first, and then Councillor Bell? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, through you. And I uh, was actually going to speak to this earlier, and Councillor Wheat there brought it up with Bean Park. The question I've been asked on this report is the fact that Bean Park's count is 54,000 people. Bean Park, the issues we went through, and Bean Park is supposed to be for public use only, not commercial use. Um, uh, the question that was put to me is how can we get these numbers with just public use? And I was asked that we keep a, keep a close eye on Bean Park because it's been kind of uh, shifting back to uh, as it was. And are we still looking at um, the park on the weekends for commercial use? Nothing. Are you, Mr. Mayor? Uh, this is not used for commercial purposes other than possibly some 
people may start up river and stop there for lunch and then continue on that type of thing. But uh, as far as launching goes, there are no commercial permits being uh, permitted for that site. And there's no intention to, to do that. Uh, as uh, Councillor Wheat alluded to, people have discovered the site. They've, they've taken a trip and and they, uh, we get repeat customers now, and I think that's going to continue, like he alludes to. We don't know if it'll be at the same level next year. I do think that there will be more opportunities for other things to come back next summer. But there certainly is growth in this area, and there's been steady growth in this area for, for many years. So that is our intent. Is uh, And remember, it's not people that we're counting. Uh, necessarily, it's how many people have passed that sensor. There could be, you know, somebody go in and go by that center sensor five times when they're loading their canoe, right? So remember, it's not exactly the people count, but it's just a, uh, a count of the activity in the area. Thank no, you. And, and I appreciate that response because that's kind of how I responded to the person. And I just wanted, uh, I just wanted it on the record here from you, Kathy. So thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Pierce. Councillor Bell, please. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I agree wholly with uh, Councillor Wheat. Uh, this is going to be an issue that we have to get control of and manage. I actually live on the river, so I see the traffic that has doubled at least this year going down there. But my concerns would, would be in, in a number of areas. One is, the if you look at Willow Street, where the Penman's Dam park is, uh, the traffic issues you get there with people either unloading or up loading up their boats after they've been on the river or about to go on the river can be quite horrendous. Uh, and I know it's the same in Glen Morris. Uh, so I think we do have a genuine problem, a safety problem there that we have to face up to. Uh, we have a problem, I think, of uh, safety on the river. Uh, I see so many drunken groups go down the river on craft that you would question whether it's going to make it all the way. Uh, we had one night last week, was, uh, last year, when somebody knocked on our door at nine in the evening and said, where's Penman's Dam? I said, it's just down the road. And he said, well, I, my boat has just deflated in the river, literally outside of my house. Uh, so th there are all kinds of issues there with safety. But I think it comes back to the, the point, I think that a couple have made, that if we, if we look at the earlier item on fees and charges, we make a distinction between those services or those facilities that are provided for folks at large. Where people make a choice, we're actually charging them a fee. And I think this is a clear case where, where users should pay. So some of the issues in the additional mitigation tactics that Kathy has laid out, I think we should bring them forward as, as John McAlpine has suggested. Uh, parking is one of them. I think a permit system to get on the river would, would not be inappropriate either, particularly at, at times of, of peak use. So I think I will vote yes, but there's much more to do. Anyone else have anything to say? Uh, I would like to speak. Uh, I, I've been at all the, the meetings with, with Kathy and met with the residents. The house that I grew up in, you can see from, the, from where we have our meetings. I was raised in Glen Morris. And this is trouble. This is a big, big problem. Councillor Wheat did not exaggerate one little bit. This is a big deal. The parking lot is not adequate, whether you charge for it or whether it isn't, it's, it's not enough. And the types of people that are coming is, the, is, is troublesome also. They're showing no respect for the people that live there. They're careless, they're, they're rude, uh, not all of them, but when I was at the meeting and, and when I was at a couple of meetings, it was consistent. So I'm not, I'm not harping on one, one example. Um, they were taking off their shirts before they got on the river. They had rafts full of beer on a secondary flotation device behind a canoe. Once you know, once you see someone take off their shirt in a 34 degree uh, day, heading down the river, you know that they don't know what they're in for. You don't take off your shirt with a with a raft full of beer and head down the river. You just don't do it. No one ever did it. No one should do it. Um, but but the place that we're talking about in Glen Morris is truly landlocked. 
I feel badly for all the people that live on Forbes Street there. Um, and I mean, parking is what we have to do. It's all we got to do. As, as Councillor Wheat said, there, there's the parking lot across from the uh, church at the top of the hill. There's wide, wide sidewalk areas all the way up the church hill. There's all kinds of places that we can put people, but it's the, it's the mannerism and the way that the people are acting when they get there that we can't control. We can only, we can only hope they get more used to coming and are more aware of the people that live there. Um, I was really horrified by the garbage and the language and people flipping people the finger when you have the nerve to comment on what they're doing or how loud they're doing it. And I thought, you know what, this is absolutely disrespectful. And if I lived there, I would lose my mind. And it's, it's truly landlocked. You go, for people that know that area, you get to the river, there's a house and a parking lot, a railroad track and a river. And, and once you get so close to the river, it's not our business anymore, it's the GRCA. So, so we have a real problem there. And John's exactly right. It's going to get a lot worse really quick because it's very good living in Glen Morris. It's a wonderful place. It's the best part of the river, I think, from Glen Morris to Paris. It's a wonderful thing. We have a big problem and I'll support this too, Kathy, but, but Councillor Bell is right. This is, you know, this is just the start of it all. It's, it's a big deal. And someone, I hope no one has to drown. I hope no one has to get hurt. I hope there's no fisticuffs uh, by neighbors and people with canoes, but it's very real and it's, it's, uh, it's a big deal. So I don't know if anyone else has anything to say, but Kathy, you've done very well with, with holding the hands of those people in Glen Morris because they're very, very upset. They didn't sign up for that when they moved to Glen Morris. Um, it's not the way Glen Morris used to live. You know, people used to live there. It's a very quiet, wonderful place to live. And it's just not that anymore. And for that, I, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, Councillor um, Howes, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, through you. Uh, yes, and I, I, um, I, I really liked the example that Councillor Wheat used. And, and it, considering that, that part of this, this report involves looking at you know do we start to charge and then do we use do, do we use the funds to help try to manage um I, I think i think we have to look at this report as a start um but but as everyone else has said encourage that this is this is just the beginning my my the point i wanted to make about using uh councillor wheat's example uh bob and charlie or whoever um they're going to pay the fee. They're, they're, they're like, they're going to say how much they're, they're going to go on the app on their phone and they're going to say, Oh, so the kayak and everything. Now it's 20 bucks for me to park and use the access done. And, and so I, I think, um, I, I think the fees while helping contribute to, to allow us to staff, to manage this are, are going to be good. I don't think the fees are going to slow down the numbers at all. And I, I think, I think we all have to be yeah. aware. We all, we all have to be aware that, that even with fees, the numbers next year could, could be very large and they'll affect all the river access places, including Glen Morris and, and, and uh, Bean Park and uh, Willow street. Um, so it's, it's, you know, I, I support the report. But I, but I think the emphasis has to be this is the beginning. Thank, thank you. I, I believe staff knows that. I think Kathy, you know that. Um, you know you know the reality of the situation, and it's not completely covered in this report. But it is a good place to start, and I'll support it also. So, is there any other questions to to the staff report? Seeing none, call the vote, vote of support. All those in favor? Opposed. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you for all your good work on that. I know it's been difficult. Um, 8B, please. Councillor Chambers. Councillor Chambers, we can't hear you. Yes, uh, I'll move the recommendation seeking a seconder. I'm looking for a seconder. Councillor Coleman, please. 
Seconded. Thank you. So the report is Russell Press on filming and digital media strategy. Does anyone have any questions? It's a really big deal in the county. It's it, uh, it's making us, uh, it's not making us enough money though, um, Mr. Mr. Press. Uh, for, for the time that it takes for these people to do what they do, and I speak again from experience, having just gone through four, year, four years of turmoil with a, with a film company, um, I know I made a lot of money, but I'm not sure that the county made enough money. Uh, I don't know whether you, what you can do about that, but understand that there's lots of money when these things come to town, and perhaps you could dig a little deeper to make some of that stay in the county. Um, maybe in negotiations with these people, I don't know, but it's certainly, they love being here. They love working with you people. We've made it easy for them. And I know they're gonna come back no matter what it costs. So that's my only criticism to the filming in the County of Brand. I think we're getting a little short change. Councillor Howes, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, through you to uh, Russell. Uh, great report, uh, thorough and, and easy to understand. Thank you. Um, I was wondering if you could speak, uh, just touch a little bit more on, um, like in reading through the report, I, I saw how we were going to manage opportunities. I saw um, tactics related to connecting with local um, um, film companies. And, but I, the, it, it, to use uh, the mayor's example, the, the big money, uh, and that is part of why we're doing this. It, it's, it's an economic benefit for our county. The, the big money is connecting with not the local companies, but the, the you know, the Toronto, the Vancouver, the, the whatever companies. And, and I know that the county has had some success in that, but how do we, how do we become more proactive in, in, um, in connecting with the right database to, to, to get us known way beyond locally. I just wonder if you could speak to that uh, anecdotally. Uh, for you, uh, Your Worship, uh, the Councillor Howes, um, as well as uh, to yourself, Your Worship, on, uh, on your, if I could, on your uh, comment, that is precisely why we, uh, this, this uh, strategy uh, was, was one of the main reasons why we, we love to do it. Um, and there's two pillars that speak to uh, to the the monetizing and the the uh, revenue um, aspect of of uh, the filming industry in in the county of Brant, uh, the defined value and the focus focus sector development pillars, uh, two of the five pillars. And um, there's sections inside each of those that speak to driving that revenue, reaching those better deals, becoming um, uh, a desired destination um, with fair value, fair market charging fair market value for, for what's provided. Um, so we are, we are doing our, the, we, we will be following this, uh, should you approve it and uh, following those, those tactics inside both those pillars um, to be able to drive that revenue as, as you quite rightly identified. Uh, we should be, we should be taking a little bit more of it and defining value for the, for the community. Um, to Councillor Howes, uh, thank you for your question. Um, there's a pillar inside this that speaks directly to it, um, which is effective communication uh, on this, as, um, as well as the, the third pillar, which is the strong stakeholder relationship piece. Um, and there are a number of tactics inside each of those pillars that will allow us to build relationships with, um, there's about a dozen um, industry organizations that, that have been identified just just since we did this strategy that uh, we've not been in touch with or that we've not established those relationships with. Um, a couple of reasons, uh, one of those reasons, um, A, we didn't really know that they were there. We didn't know what we didn't know. And again, the strategy uncovered that for us, which was uh, immensely helpful. The other piece um, goes, goes back to, did we really wanna have added volume and were we ready for that added volume? Um, in the community it's uh you're basically inviting an industry in um for a shoot for you know anywhere from you know three days on a small one um through to a number of weeks and even months as uh, his worship would would attest to um and you know 
is that a level of disruption that that we were ready for and that that the community um, would understand and, and that we could we could manage and uh, we were we're we were not experts we were we were learning kind of on the fly when when we started to get this massive increase in volume and then it happened the next year again and we got a little bit better at it and then it happened again and then that's when we decided you know maybe we should go to some of the industry experts regardless of the size of the community and see what the best practices are and start to put some tactics together where we can then invite the type of productions we would like to have here that are less maybe impactful in some areas that are maybe more residual when it comes to uh, to, to paying for for what they uh, are going to use and what they're going to make use of um, in their production and um, conversely what are some of the what are some of the uh, networks that we want to establish to to be able to um, be better prepared when a, when a production comes in and asks for a street to be closed and know the exact questions that that we need the answers to um, that's what this whole document in this whole report is about counselor so it's a great question i don't have the answers yet that's what this that's what this strategy is is designed to do and um, as soon as we get it uh, as soon as as you see fit to do with what you, you're going to do with it here tonight uh, should that be approval um, I've got staff waiting to get the green light to uh, to start working on it. So, uh, th thank you, uh, Russell. Uh, um, and I like I like the idea of you know people will see this uh, this video this this um, meeting video who won't necessarily read that report online. Um, and it, it's it's good for residents of the county to know that you know we're not embracing this filming strategy out of pride and, and out of wanting to see, um, you know, you know, parts of the County show it up in a movie or whatever that, while that's nice, um, that's not why we're interested. We're interested because there's an economic benefit to the County, um, the, the, in a lot of different areas. And it, it's, it's good for people to understand that. So, um, thank you. Councillor Bell, you're first then Councillor Gottward, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you to Russell. Russell, what's the economic value? What price would you put on this on success of this strategy? That's a good question. Through you, uh, Your Worship, to uh, Councillor Bell. That's a fantastic question. I, I don't have a dollar value. There are measurements in each one of the uh, measurements of success in each one of the pillars. Um, so, looking at the, I think there's 106 tactics. Um, each one will have uh, a measure of success on whether we achieve or we don't achieve, and to what degree of achievement. Um, I would say that uh, if you go back through the document, it, it speaks to if we become more of kind of the low hanging fruit and the ones that would be most important really um, for, for us would be the making sure that we do a great job in, in being better communicators with the community of what's coming in and what's expected and, and what would they need, uh, what does the community need, the business community as well as the residential community that's impacted to be able to, to um, uh, facilitate this industry um, impacting the community. Uh, and then on the other side, on the true economic side of it, um, we are going to be learning how to better how to better negotiate with uh, with filming production teams when prior to coming. What what do they need? And, and then putting a, a cost to that and a, and a price to that. Yeah, the, 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 if I may, Mr. Mo, the, the reason I ask is, uh, it's a huge report you've produced. It's very detailed, you said 106, tactics it sounds like a lot of staff work will be required to make it happen uh, i just want to be confident that the return for the staff involvement is worth it compared to getting a new factory in the 403 business park it's it through you your worship uh to councillor bell it's a it's a it's a good point it's a it's a small, um, it what would seem a, a smaller industry. However, the ripple effect for for this industry is is uh, really could be quite significant if we were to do it properly. And that's why we uh, we invested in in suggested we do this strategy um, is to be able to to build and diversify the uh, the landscape for filming and digital media. And just a quick example, um, we are one of the first communities to do such a comprehensive. Um, uh, filming strategy, and we've received, um, I believe it's two or, or three um, inquiries about digital media, uh, setting up a digital media um, business in the county, um, hosting 
uh, a, a, a film festival in the county um, by residents that uh, have just moved here. And, and so there's an opportunity here to build the, this, this creative industry in, in the community in conjunction with the other areas and, and sectors that we would be developing. Additionally, I should also mention that, yes, there's 106 tactics. A lot of these tactics, if, if you're following through on one, there's probably two or three other pieces that fall into place just by getting that one done. So there, there is a little bit of, a, of an efficiency of, of uh, volume here. Yeah, I, I guess just to summarize, my, my simple mind says, show me the money. We're going to do our best, Councillor. Councillor Gatwood, you're next, and then Councillor Ferrier, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you to Russell. Um, the um, security and traffic piece of the film industry, as we know, they close down streets. They bring a tremendous amount of equipment and people with them, and they need security and traffic help with their filming locations. The seat committee still meets, I believe, and works through some of these requests. Um, do they ever recommend private security firms if our officers are too busy to attend and help them out? Because last year, the reason I asked this, last year when I attended a policing conference, we had an excellent presentation from a speaker who talked about um, security and private um, companies. And after the presentation, I asked them if they did film sets and they do. They have experience. Well, they're worldwide, this company. And I think I gave the card to Mayor Bailey um, because I know sometimes our officers are too busy when they're requested. So do you use private um, companies or suggest that to the film companies when they come in? Through, through your, your worship to Councillor Gatward. Um, Following the seat process, if the roads division that sits, the member of roads division sits on the, uh, that sits on the seat committee asks for, um, or, or any any division, if, if it's a bylaw or, or what have you, um, if, if they were to ask for uh, additional security, um, uh, additional um, um, enforcement, we would make that request through the production and for the production to be able to, uh, to do the filming, they would have to comply. So um, sometimes, with roads, there's in closing of roads. There's only uh, there's a quite a bit of legislation around who can close a road and, and has the authority to do that. Um, and we rely on the expertise of of the OPP um, to tell us uh, what can happen there. Um, as far as security goes, we we there have been instances when there's been security firms hired uh, for for you know control situations. Great, because there's it's I was in downtown. Brantford the other day and they were I think wrapping up a film shoot there and the traffic was horrendous and backed up on Dalhousie Street like you can't believe so I, I it reminded me how annoying it can be and there was no traffic controls um, nobody helping people get through lights I finally gave up and went a different route because I didn't want to sit through about six traffic lights on Jalousy Street. And um, if the police aren't available, then you're telling me they would go to a private security firm to help with the shoot, to control pedestrians and traffic away from their shoot? Or how does that work? Through your worship to Councillor Goward, uh, again, if if that's required through uh, either our, a member of our roads uh, that sits on seat or emergency services, talking about egress, um, that that sort of thing. If there's a requirement for additional enforcement um, or or control, they'll make that specific request, and then um, the seat 
administrator will will go through the producer and, and the location manager to make sure that those those requests are met prior to the production arriving. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Gatwood. Councillor LaFerrier, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, through you to staff. Thanks so much for this report. Uh, just a couple of key points. We've been talking a lot about the money piece. Uh, arts and culture is a huge economic driver in Canada. If we want to have a diversified economy. We are doing things, as, as Councillor Bell pointed out, to you know get you know, factories and retail and uh, you know farming and, and agricultural related industries are the top economic driver in Canada, but arts is in the top five. It's a huge part of our GDP, especially in Ontario, and um, we, we stand to benefit from it. It's not just for, you know, the actors and the media folks, and I used to work in media, and, and you know, I, I love it. Uh, it is for the security guards that get hired, for the tradespeople that get hired, uh, for the off-duty police officers that get hired, for the catering that happens and tends to happen locally. Uh, and it has a, a lot of spin-off benefits in terms of reputational benefits. Um, free advertising, we've seen a lot of that with uh, commercials and things that have been done here, specifically in Paris, but all over the county. Um, I just think this is uh, really needed. Um, I think it's really important. Uh, and that, that arts and culture piece, um, it, it, it makes a lot of financial sense in the long run. Um, I, I'm glad we're investing in it now, as we have been. Um, I just want to state support for it. And uh, just to remember that it helps a lot of folks outside of the media piece. And Councillor Howes and I are really looking forward to when, whenever we have a Comic Con in the County of Brant. So, thank you. Any other comments, concerns, Mr. Bradley? Yeah, thank you, Your Worship. If I could just jump in, there was a question about um, Councillor Bell's question, which is a good question. What's the show me the money? Um, and I did, did a little bit, bit of research, and uh, I don't have specific for county, but it's worth noting in 2019, Ontario's film and TV industry was a 2.16 billion dollar industry. And it, it support or created directly or in or uh, through spinoff 44,540 jobs. So it's it's not an unsubstantial business. And it's certainly I know when the productions move in, I've been involved with a few of them through uh, logistical uh, matters. And they have huge impacts on the local economy when they come in. You know, there's a lot of local businesses that benefit significantly from that. And I think that's that's the good reason, as, as Councillor LaFerrier indicated, why we're doing this. So I just wanted to add that. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Uh, I'd just like to add that I know personally that uh, they love working in the County of Brant. Uh, there's lots of places somewhat like us, very close to us, that they would never go back to because it wasn't, they weren't treated properly, uh, they weren't accepted, they weren't, um, and I know from experience, both with the Hollywood one that just left here, my house, and the Toronto ones with the Murdoch mysteries and things like that, they love it here. It's easy for them to work here. Parking, is, there's parking lots, there's, uh, and, and really for us to move forward looking for a little bit more money. Um, and sometimes the certificate or the accreditation we got earlier in this meeting, sometimes we need to know what we have to sell here. And you just saw how we, our world standing for, for everything we have in the County of Brant with the certification that we got this evening. So sometimes we under evaluate ourselves and uh, I just know moving forward with this, how much they wanna be here. So I don't think money is going to be a problem for them because it really is about convenience and how much they can get done. They wanna get their job done and get out of here. So the more cooperation they get, the, the better for everyone. So I support it completely. Um, Councillor LaFerry, you have one more thing to say? Yeah, just, just briefly. The, the other piece is that this dovetails really nicely with our, our heritage district strategy uh, because that's a big drawing uh, point is, is, you know, especially for period pieces, you brought up Murdoch Mysteries and I know, you know, with your house, you've seen that as well, that we have some very unique heritage um, properties and areas that it becomes really important to maintain. I'd, I'd rather be a, uh, um, uh, you know, a, a quaint uh, historic uh, drama than a zombie town as we've seen some other neighbors uh, portrayed as in, in film and video. Uh, so we're very lucky in that way as well. Any other comments, questions? Seeing none, everyone's knowing what they're voting about. Uh, all those in favor? Opposed? Thank you for another great report, Russ. Moving on to 8C. <coughs> Councillor Coleman. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Moving myself, second by Councilor McAlpine, that the staff report RPT-20-209 request for speed limit reduction on Bramford Street be deferred for further input from the applicant. Okay, I have a note here. Has this been deferred, uh, Madam Clerk? Asking for a deferral, Mr. Mayor. Asking for a deferral? Yeah, the there was a request on the addendum to defer. Okay, so we just pass on that and defer it? Yep. Yeah, thank you. We'll move on then to number 8D. Uh, Councillor Coleman. Oh, sorry, again Mayor Bailey. Oh, yep. We do need to vote on the deferral motion though that Councillor Coleman right. presented. So it's on the floor and it has a secondary and Councillor McAlpine. All those in favor to defer, please. That was easy. Number D, Councillor Coleman, it's you again, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Move on myself, second by Councillor McAlpine. That design report from Nicholson Sheffield Architects for the Canesville Community Center be approved and that staff be directed to issue a request for tenders for the construction of the Canesville Community Center to pre-qualified contractors. And I would like to speak to Mr. Mayor. All right, uh, Councilor Cohen, do you want to speak first? Yes, please. Thank okay. you, Mr. Mayor. Yep. Um, as you related, related earlier this evening, uh, this has been a long time coming and, and uh, there's a few people that uh, uh, I would like to thank for this, and, and besides yourself, Councillor Gatward, uh, Mr. Barton, and Mr. Smith, uh, I would like to thank staff, especially for all the help that they have given to this. Uh, we have run uh, two community meetings, and the community needs to be thanked, especially for their all their input into this is their design, and we hope that uh, uh, they will be pleased uh, when this project is completed. So my thanks to uh, uh, Cindy Stevenson and, and, and Kathy Ballantyne and Michael Bradley for all the hard work that they have put into this and the, and the patience they have put up with me and, and whatnot. And uh, further to uh, uh, Councillor Chambers, uh, I know you're at the far end of the municipality, but I will be glad to come and pick you up and, and uh, as a for, old, former 4-H member uh, and bring you to the first community event in Canesville. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Any other comments, concerns? I am I am so happy to, to to support this. It's been a wonderful process. Um, as the mayor, I guess it's the first one that I've seen right from the beginning, and it, it was exciting. And people are going to be very happy. Um, with that being said, if there's no other comments or questions, call the vote. All those in favor? Anyone opposed? Thank you. Councillor Howes, please, you have number 8C. Uh, number 8E, uh, e. Mr. Mayor. Yes, it is. Uh, thank you. Uh, moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Wheat that staff report RPT-20-214, Council and Committee Meetings Update be approved. Do we have questions to the clerk or does the clerk wanna speak first? No, I'm just ready if there's any questions. All right, are there any questions for Heather about the scheduling for, no? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? I'm carried, thank you. Eight, uh, Councillor Pierce, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, through you, uh... Moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Chambers at the staff report RPT-20-217 for the 2021 grants process be approved. Are there questions about the grants process? Really? Providence, you're lucky to, uh-oh, Councillor Gatward. Just a quick one. Um, <laughs> I understand how staff has divided the responsibilities for the grants. Um, are they or have they already sent out to all the groups uh, notification about this and when their applications have to be in by? I believe Robin? it's February. Yeah. Thank you, Robin. Through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, nothing has been sent out yet until we have the process approved by council. But it will be before Christmas, right? It can be, yes. Great, thank you very much. Are there any other quick, Councillor Chambers, please. 
just uh, I'm wondering if uh, anybody is approached, uh, a counselor is approached by a group wanting to uh, know about grants, who do we refer them to? Robin? So through you, Mr. Mayor, you can refer them to Heather Bailey. Um, and you can also refer them to the website because all of the information and the grant application will be located on the website. Thank you, Robin. Are there any other questions to Robin regarding the grant process? Seeing them, call the vote, all those in support. Anyone opposed? It's carried. Thank you, Robin. Number G, Councillor Miller, please. Moved by myself, second by Councillor Laferriere, that staff report RPT-20-222-County 20 220 Brant update on the COVID-19 emergency be approved. Thank you. Michael, do you want to speak to this or do you want to wait for questions? Yeah, happy to take any questions, Your Worship. All right. Are there any questions to Michael? Councilor Chambers, you're first. Just to, again, through you, Mr. Mayor, to Michael. With regard to uh, neighboring municipalities, uh, for example, there's been uh, uh, quite an outbreak apparently in the uh, uh, township of Norwich, which borders on the uh, western uh, boundary of the county. Uh, is there any uh, uh, coordination or overlap? Because a lot of people in Brant County live very, very close uh, to Norwich and, and uh, are involved in the Norwich community, uh, but they're covered by a different, I believe they're covered by the Southwest uh, Health Unit. So I'm just wondering how that's coordinated to uh, advise the community members on both sides of the border. Mr. Bradley? Yeah, thank you. Through you, Your Worship. Um, I think a couple things, but partly it is the, uh, the, the new provincial, um, provincial mechanism for imposing restrictions it is determined by the province with input from all of the local uh, medical officers of health so for example if the southwest region uh, moves into the red category and we stay in the orange that that would be a decision that the, the, the chief medical officer of health in Ontario would make in consultation with the two uh, with, with, with the with the local uh, chief uh, medical or the medical officers of health so um, we don't have a lot to do with that, although they do ask uh, our municipal input. Now, what I can say is that our, our CEMC, who is our fire chief and our emergency management coordinator, has regular uh, team meetings with our neighbors. And so if there are overlapping things, if there's things that they think we need to know or we have questions for them, that's when that's discussed. And then how, how, how we would, you know, if there was information they want to say, hey, just so you're aware, there's an outbreak here, you may want to know this. Um, then we would we would then communicate it out to our citizens if if they brought that to our attention. So um, I think that the last thing, and and it's my understanding that our our, our chief medical officer of health, Dr. Banky, does participate in regular discussions with her colleagues, neighboring colleagues. So again, I think there's several um, amount several venues of communication going on between at the municipal level and at the medical officer of health level uh, around these types of of things. So hopefully that answers the question. Any other questions for Michael? Councillor Bell. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, through you to Michael, it's not, it's not a, a question, it's a comment that the um, document you appended, which was the uh, response framework, you had the November 3rd version. Uh, it has been updated, I think, November the 20th, if I'm not mistaken. There are some slight changes, uh, and, and if people wish to refer to it, please. Uh, maybe you could just send the uh, updated version out to us, Michael. Will do. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions for Michael? Seeing none, calling the vote to support. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Uh, number E8, please. Uh, Councillor Bell, this is yours. Yeah, moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Gatwood that staff report RPT 20 223 Rural Ontario Municipal Association and Ontario Good Roads Association 2021 conferences be approved. Questions or comments? None for Heather. Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? And carried. Thank you.
Moving on to number nine, there are no communications. There are no questions. Anyone have any questions? Resolutions, other business, new business. Councillor Gatward, you had something? Councillor Gatward, are you coming or going? There you go. I'm, thank you. I um, I had to grab my report. <laughs> um, as council's aware, the GRCA had a special meeting yesterday and um, they discussed the proposed changes in Bill 229, um, which is the COVID Recovery Act for the province. But in that COVID Recovery Act, Section 6 speaks to changes for the Grand River Conservation Authority, which brings us great concern. And the all municipalities in the watershed have received correspondence late this afternoon, which was too late to make our agenda. But I'm requesting that the clerk place that on the um, next council meeting agenda so that um, we can consider a motion at our next December 1st meeting. And um, the information uh, was sent out as a media release and I'd be happy to send what I have to any council member that wants it. But I wanted to make council aware that there's been what I would consider some blockbuster changes coming down the pipe. And I don't think that they're good for our municipality. We have a river that runs through our county and two rivers actually in, in the town of Paris. And we need protection. We need all the good things that the GRCA provides our communities in the whole watershed from the Luther Marsh right down to Grand Erie or Lake Erie. And so there will be a resolution coming forward at the December 1st meeting. And I wanted to just give council a heads up. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Gatward. Um, um, Heather, you, you, you've, heard, you've heard that and it'll be on the uh, agenda for December the 1st. Yes, I have the correspondence. Thank, thank you. I'm sure I'm Councillor Chambers has already heard about it as well, because um, every conservation authority in the province is included and um, he's on the Long Point Conservation Authority and the changes are <clears throat> everywhere. Yeah, Councillor Chambers, did you want, you want to speak to this too? Yes, uh, he would like to say that uh, uh, the Conservation Ontario, uh, which is like the Roma for conservation authorities, uh, has issued a response that perhaps Heather could uh, research and circulate as well as the response of the uh, Conservation Ontario to the proposed changes uh, that are uh, included within the uh, uh, proposed legislation. Okay. Heather, you've got that too? Yeah, I'll source that one as well. Thank you. Any other comments? Thank you, Councillor Gatward, for bringing that to our attention. Uh, number 13 is in camera, Councillor McAlpine. Moved by myself and seconded by Councillor House that the County of Brant convene in camera to discuss the security of the property of the municipality, a proposed acquisition of land by municipality, negotiations carried on behalf of the municipality, RPT 20-221 Rapid Housing Initiative and personal information about an identifiable individual the point of directors to Brant Municipal Enterprises. Everyone I'll call the vote, all those in favor. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Bell, you're next. Councillor Bell, yep. I think you need, we need to ratify what we've just discussed in camera. So uh, moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Pierce 
that Daryl Lee and Will Buchholz be appointed to the Board of Directors for Brandt Municipal Enterprises, Inc., each for a four-year term. Thank you. Are there any concerns about either of those appointments? Seeing none, we'll call the vote. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Bylaws, uh, Councillor Ferrier. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I, I seem to get these a lot. This is very technical, but uh, let, me, let me try to read the script here. Uh, moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Pierce, the bylaws number 136-20 to 140-20 be read for the first time. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried, if you could do the second reading, please, Councillor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Pierce, the bylaws number 136-20 and 140-20 be read a second time and all clauses and preambles be adopted. Thank you. Are there any questions about any of the bylaws? Anything you want separated? No, seeing none. Third reading, please, Councillor. Call the vote. Oh, call, call the vote. All those in favor? I do it every time. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Third reading, please. Moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Pierce, the bylaws number 136-20 to 140-20. Be read a third time, passed, signed, and executed. Thank you. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Next meeting, Tuesday, December the 1st. Madam Clerk, you have a couple of things to add to that agenda for Councillor Gatward. Yep. Candidate Heather, do you have, we have a meeting, um, Committee of the Whole, Michael, for the budget that's still on. Thank you, Your Worship. And uh, I wanted to bring this to Council's attention and discuss this uh, uh, for a few seconds, if, if Council will indulge me. So we have a budget meeting scheduled for December 3rd. Uh, at the last budget meeting, there were a few questions that were outstanding, and I, I think we are assembling that information. Um, there was a request at the last meeting also to have the City of Brantford's, uh, the Social Services, Housing and Children's Services uh, Department come forward and, um, and provide a, a presentation of their budget. Uh, so at, at this point, we have reached out and we are checking in with the external agencies and, and we, we do have a bit of a problem. And our problem is this, uh, right now the John Noble Home won't have a budget for us until December 9th. Uh, the Brant County Health Unit, it's my understanding that they're gonna try to uh, consider their budget on the first or the second but they, it may be a struggle for them to have their budget to us on the third. And uh, the, maybe the bigger challenge is the city departments, uh, their departments are just now submitting their departmental budgets into their uh, senior management team for initial consideration by that. And they won't be ready to present a budget, any of their budgets publicly until the new year. So, so this, this is a bit of a dilemma for us to go forward with a, with a meeting on December 3rd when we're missing what I would call three critical external agency budgets. Um, because usually before we would start to move forward in consideration of the, of the decision packages in our budget, or um, we would want our, our base budget uh, to be well known, to, to, be, to, know, to know the base budget fully before we start moving into decision packages. And that's where at the staff level we viewed our next meeting going. So I think a council's got a couple of options. We can proceed with a December meeting. Uh, noting that first of all, we, we won't have the city of Brantford at that meeting. They're not ready to present a budget. They, they said they could come in and talk about their programming, but they won't have a budget to present. Um, we could uh, also continue to discuss the base budget, but it would be, it, I, I still think it'd be challenging for council to go forward and, and consider decision packages when we still don't know the full context of the base budget, which would be influenced by those three external agencies. Um, the other option would be for us to just defer any further consideration of the budget until the new year, uh, when hopefully a lot of these matters would be sorted out. And uh, I think we would, it's my understanding, we would have a, an approved John Noble home budget by then, an approved, um, it's, it's, sorry, at the board level, um, uh, as a John Noble home budget, a Brant County Health Unit budget, and that the city department would at least be in a position to come forward and, uh, and present the draft budget that they're presenting to city council. So. Again, I think um, council does need to discuss this tonight. Give us some direction on whether you want to go ahead with the December 3rd meeting or whether we want to just uh, pause our budget process uh, for these other groups to catch up. And I think noting that it is, has been a challenging year for getting this kind of stuff done. And I think our team certainly uh, had to tough out a lot of work to get in the position we're in right now, but, but not everyone has. So 
Um, happy to answer any questions. The treasurer's here as well. Uh, looking for a discussion and or a motion. Councillor Pierce, you're first. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor, through you. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's kind of disappointing. Um, you know, kudos to our staff, like you say, for all the work that they've done to get us into this position that we're ready to go. Um, uh, honestly, I don't think it makes sense to go through with a meeting if we don't have that information. So I would, I would uh, put a motion on the table that we do defer. Um, now, Michael, are you are you thinking like mid January? What I'm I'm just looking for a time frame, or do we leave the motion as until such time as those three are ready to go? Yeah, through, through you, Your Worship, I, I think at this point it's hard for us to, I mean, we would like to get our budget done. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, we, the capital budget um, unapproved, we can't go to tender now. We'll be discussing about going to tender on capital uh, to get uh -huh. budget approval, um, but having an approved capital budget is a good thing for us to get start getting out to tender. So we would want to get this moving as fast as we can as soon as the new year turns around. Um, that being said, again, we are missing some critical information. So I would suggest it'd be hard to pick a date at this point, but it would be staff's position to try to work with our partners to get this information to council as soon as we can in the new year. All right, okay, uh, then I, let, I would put let, the motion that as soon as uh, staff is is uh, in a situation we're ready to go to call a meeting. I'll second okay. your motion, uh, Councillor Pierce, and refer that next meeting as any meeting is at the call of the chair, and that's the mayor. Okay, it's on the floor. It has a seconder. There's conversation. Councillor Miller, you're first. Just uh, what I was going to say, I don't have to say because um, I'm in support of this motion. Because um, I know one of the placeholders for one of your external agencies is way out of whack. Um, but I, 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 I agree with Michael. I would like to see us move ahead as soon as we can because I understand sometimes it helps the early bird uh there yeah the early bird gets the worm so with some of these um tenders uh getting them out so i mean i <laughs> i'm one of those guys who would be willing to meet you know christmas eve if we had to just to get her done but uh you know i i appreciate the uh, the motion to to defer but um at the same time let's get it done as soon as we can get it done and that's Absolutely. all councillor bell you're next and then councillor gatward yeah thank you mr uh through to michael I know from uh, my own and, and uh, the mayor's experience with Brown County Health Unit, we should be able to give you a pretty close number on before December the 3rd. So one which might have a, a small variance. Uh, my, my take on it would be that because we have, want to get out in the market, make our tenders uh, as soon as we can, I would prefer to just get on with it and, and recognize there'll be some uncertainty that will resolve itself in January. But, you know, it may be that we drop off one decision package at the end, but we'll know if we've done our job properly, which decision package we will drop off. We know the, the sequence and the priority of those uh, decision packages and we'll just work our way down the list until we, till we hit a budget level that we're comfortable with. And I think deciding on what is a comfortable budget level, I don't think we have to wait till, uh, till the middle of January for it. I would sooner go ahead. Thank you, Councillor Bell. Councillor Gatward? Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I I realize staff is anxious to get going on the tendering, but I do realize also that there's projects that were deferred last year and didn't get finished because of COVID. So those projects have already been approved and can be tendered early, um, like Cedar Street and Jenkins Road. They were deferred last year, but approved in the budget. and um we don't have to wait till mid-january i'm i'm in favor of of um delaying because i think we need to do it right and there's still questions we want to ask probably in the future um we've never gotten any actual numbers from previous years either and i wanted to ask about that because uh, last year and this year we didn't get those numbers. Um, now, sometimes the treasurer gives us a quarterly report by department with those numbers of actual expenditures, but it, it's very helpful to me to see those numbers and how the budgets, which direction we're going up and up or down. Um, there's been all this change that's been made to the budget documents, which to be quite, Frank, I don't like, but 
I lived with it, but I, I'm willing to wait till January. It doesn't have to be mid January could be called early January. And, and, um, I'm going to support the, um, the motion by Councillor Pearson Wheat. Thank you. Um, Councillor LaFerrier. Mr. Mayor, for you and Michael, um, I know there was a, a motion on the table in Brantford to take us to arbitration over uh, paramedic services budget being um, perceived as late, uh, even though it's uh, completed and approved at the, at the committee level. Um, do you have any knowledge of if that was successful in Brantford, if they are going to take us to arbitration over this? Or I know it was just a vote last time I checked, but I didn't see the result of the vote. Mr. Bradley, is that true? Through you, Your Worship, I, I do believe I, I'd seen a report that was going to the council. I'm not sure when it was destined to go to council. The treasurer just popped up, so maybe she has some information on that. But I haven't seen any notice come from the city. Uh, maybe the treasurer can help. Heather? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, I, I do not know the result. It did go to their finance committee about a week and a half ago, but I have not heard what the actual resolution was to whether it was passed as it was written, which was to go to dispute resolution. So, okay, I just I just bring that up because if there's if one of our partners is incredibly late on a giant budget item, and they are taking us to arbitration over a small budget item, um, I think that's a valuable uh, piece of information for the entirety of council to have um, as we as we look to move uh, move forward with our budget. Now, that said, if we are in arbitration, then we don't we don't know that paramedic services budget uh, for us as a county because it'll be in dispute as well. So we're not going to have numbers on that uh, if it's uh, if it's in arbitration. I don't know how long that process would take. That that would be that would be very uh, d disappointing if that. Uh, we're true council of Ferrier, so. Incredibly, incredibly. I don't know the result of that vote. And, and even if it passed the finance committee, it would still have to pass at, count, at their council before we right. get our notice. Well, we'll, we'll keep our eye on that one. Uh, we have a motion on the table by Councillor Pierce, seconded by Councillor Wheat. Let's take the vote and see how it makes out. And if it's defeated, we'll talk about other things, but if it's not defeated, we'll adjourn. Call the vote. All those in favor of Councillor Wheat, Councillor Pierce's direction. Opposed is, we have two opposed. It's carried. Thank you. Call of the if chair. I, if I might, Mr. Mayor, I added what to Councillor Pierce's recommendation, but the next meeting can be at the call of the chair. That's right. We get together with um, CAO Bradley and come up with a date, then you have the right to call that meeting. And I will, Councillor Wheat. Councillor, I mean, Councillor Walton. Mr. Walton. <laughs> <laughs> Which word would he be? Council, I just wanted to remind everyone that there is a public information More center night. via Zoom tomorrow night for Cedar Street. And um, bear with us, this is our first time doing it uh, this way. It's uh, it's gonna be a big change, but uh, hopefully we can have a very effective meeting. There is already material on the website, which the public has been informed of that they can look at ahead of time. There'll be a short presentation tomorrow night. And then there's gonna be some sort of a question and answer period as well facilitated um, through um, um, typed questions, I believe, so. Thank you. Uh, it's, it's in my schedule, so. Yep, uh, see you yeah, there. We, yeah, we'll see you there. Anything else for the betterment of the County of Brant? Seeing Sorry, what, what time is that meeting? Is, is that six or seven? Six o'clock. Six o'clock. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Councilor okay. Chambers? Uh, Mr. Mayor, before we adjourn, could I just, uh, notify uh, CAO Bradley and Councillor Coleman that I referred a resident uh, uh, to them that is having a, an issue with uh, a development in uh, GRCA. So you'll be getting a call from uh, Rob Janiak. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, motion to adjourn. to adjourn. Councillor Pierce. Thank you. We stand.